Where is the black man's government? Where is his king and his kingdom? Where is his president, his country, his men of big affairs? I could not find them. And then I declared, I will help to make them. My brain was a fire. I want to open up and talk about uh, Black History Month. Uh, black History Month. I want to touch on the origin of Black History Month. Let's go to Google, please. Let's go to Google and look up Black History Month. Everybody get your notes, notebooks, pens, and paper. Black History Month. I want everybody to pay close attention. And y'all got to let me know, when is, hey, Abby, when is Latin History Month? When is that? They just made that thing up. When is that one? September. September. We're going to talk about y'all in September, so y'all got a few more months. All right, go up to the top. Go all the way to the top now. I want to read briefly about the origin of Black History Month. Some of you in here may or may not be familiar with it. You young ones, I know you definitely are not familiar with it, so we're going to read it for you. It reads, Black History Month, also known as African American History Month in America, is an annual observance in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom for remembrance of important people. L listen good to what we're about to say. It says, for remembrance of important people and events in the history of the African diaspora. That's very important for today's lesson. Black History Month is a month of remembrance of important people and events in the history of the African diaspora, as they call African diaspora, diaspora, but we know it's Israelites. I'm going to show you all today the hypocrisy of Babylon the Great, the hypocrisy of the United States of America. Now, let's jump down to history right here. I, I want to read right here. The precursor to Black History Month was created in 1926 in the United States when historian Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History announced the second week of February to be Negro History Week. This week was chosen because it coincided with the birthday of Abraham Lincoln on February 12th. Now, you know Abraham Lincoln hated the slaves with a passion, uh, and of Frederick Douglass on February 14th, both of which dates black communities had celebrated together since the late 19th century. Okay, let's go down and jump down to the next um, section right here. Okay, see where it says Black History Month, 1976. So it went from Black History Week, now watch what it says here. The expansion of Black History Week to Black History Month was first proposed by the leaders of the Black United Students of Kent State University in February 1969. The first celebration of the, Black, of the Black History Month took place at Kent State one year later, February 1970. Okay. Right. So now, watch this. Let's go out of here. So we see how it started. It went from Black History Week to Black History Month in 1970. Now, I want to take us to the article on our friend, our sister, <laughs> Beyonce. Give me the article, Daily News, music. Here's why Beyonce haters are wrong. Now, I want all y'all to listen to what I'm about to say. Your brothers online too. We often give our people in the entertainment world a bad rap. But let's take a moment, pause, and think sometimes. Remind me to bring this topic up later on. 
Protesters are planning an anti-Beyonce rally due to Super Bowl performance. Let's watch the video. Apparently, former Mayor Giuliani doesn't carry hot sauce in his bag. Beyonce faced criticism from politicians, including former Mayor Rudy Giuliani and Representative Peter King of Long Island, for being anti-police following her halftime performance at Sunday's Super Bowl. Now, an anti-Bayhive is planning a rally on February 16th outside of the NFL headquarters in Manhattan after the superstar's performance, which they claim had ties to the Black Panthers and Black Lives Matter. The organizer behind the event remains unnamed, but the website asked viewers if they were offended as an American by Beyoncé, who is also American, nor do they mention Coldplay or Bruno Mars. The Bay hater writes, be peaceful and respect the boundaries of private property, as a note for the protest. The unidentified organizer did not respond to a Daily News request for comment. Okay, let's go to the actual article now. Pan down, scroll down so I can read along. Read it. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to read the article, Daily News. It may be time for America to tweak its fundamental tagline because the land of the free, the home of the brave, no longer fits. In the face of the mounting criticism of Beyonce's Super Bowl performance on Sunday, it sure seems like America has become the land of the amnesia patients. <laughs> um... On the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, its original name, Beyonce crashed Coldplay's rainbow, its stage to deliver a message. People of color are tired of being killed, tired of being shortchanged, tired of having their feelings being mocked by the very demographic that continues to hold them back. Okay, so now let's go down. The picked out afros, the all black attire, the militant garb, and song to match. If you listen to the lyrics, she talks about people don't like our nappy hair, our wide nose, breathing up all the white man's air, you know, things like that. The lyrics was, was okay. The picked out afros, the all black attire, the militant garb, and song to match had some viewers asking why the NFL allowed Beyonce to make the radical chic. How quickly... We all have forgotten the pain in this country has inflicted on people of color and continues to do so today. The land of the shortened memories <laughs> the land of the shortened memories empowered police to sick dogs on innocent people and spray them down with powerful water hoses simply for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. This great America bought its deep complexion citizens from riding in the front of the bus and using the same water fountain as others, meaning white folks, among countless, among countless other outlandish inequities and indecencies. The revolutionary group born in Oakland, California in 1966 by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale provided demands for the improvement of life for black people, a radical list that included freedom, number one, number two, full, yeah, that's radical, Number two, full employment for black people. Number three, decent housing. Four, education. Five, end police brutality. Well, yeah, that's radical. I thought that was just, you know, normal for people. Beyonce and other public figures have remained silent on this issue for far too long. I'm going to read that again. This is why I said to y'all what I said earlier. Beyonce and other public figures have remained silent on this issue for far too long. But now that she has a child who could easily become the next hashtag victim, Miss Carter has chosen to speak up. And for that, she's being called a racist and anti-police. But ignoring the points of her halftime show and a video of her new song, Formation, is its own form of racism. And racism comes from fear of the unknown, which should be expected in a country where even something as simple as Black History Month Lessons in school is under fire. Let me look at the picture. Go back to the picture. Okay. They had the sisters out, all black, you know, afros uh, all out, um, picked out. You even had Bruno Mars come out. His team came away in all black. They did fist, in the, fist pump in the air. Come on, up, up, up. People fear what they don't know, and they don't want to learn, so the fear grows. Now, the they that they're speaking of is white folks. You're a friendly neighborhood white man. Uh it is a grave misconception that Black Panthers promoted the killings of police. Come on, let me read that part again. It is a grave misconception that Black Panthers
Panthers promoted the killings of police. That's accurate. They did not promote it. Just as, as it is so that Black Lives Matter means every other life doesn't. Exactly. Black pride, the message Beyonce was trying to convey, means being proud of who you are, what you look like, and where you come from. Come on. Okay, this was the Black Panthers photo from back in the day. Okay. Black people with our full lips, kinky hair, dark skin, have been called ugly, ignorant, and uneducated for so long that there wasn't a better stage for this type of moment. The symbolism of, symbolism of Queen Bay's efforts missed some people, and that's because the message wasn't for them. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, that was it, right? Let's close out. So now, I wanted all that to show you the hypocrisy of Black History Month. She read, the thing she did during the NFL was about Black History Month. White folks got angry. They said, why didn't she do a march on Martin Luther King? She didn't choose to do Martin Luther King. She chose the Black Panthers. Who else did she choose? Or somebody else. Malcolm X, right, because they formed the X. And white folks went f crazy. Your friends at work went mad. Now I want to show the next video with the white woman commenting on Beyonce. So all, I'm going to tell you what this is for Miss Carter. Like Paul Mooney says, she got her nigga wake-up call. That's all it is, a nigga wake-up call. Some of us in here have gotten our nigga wake-up call. Um, let's look at the next. Yeah, this is it. Tommy Lyron to Beyonce. I don't know, Tommy, however you say the name. The shul. Your, see what it says? Your husband was a drug dealer. Worry about that. Watch what your friendly neighborhood white, because some of y'all think the white woman is not in cahoots or in league with her white man. You are sorely, surely mistaken. Welcome back for some final thoughts tonight. First, it was hands up, don't shoot. Then it was burning down buildings and looting drug stores all the way to Oscar so white. And now even the Super Bowl halftime show has become a way to politicize and advance the notion that black lives matter more. This isn't about equality. This is about ramrodding an aggressive agenda down our throats and using fame and entertainment value to do so. Beyonce, really? What is the political message here? What is it they are trying to convey here? A salute to what? A group that used violence and intimidation to advance not racial equality, but an overthrow of white domination? The Black Panthers, for those who don't know, were critical of Martin Luther King's nonviolent civil rights movement. They didn't believe in change through peace. They promoted violence instead. So congratulations, Beyonce. You made your statement. You should be proud of yourself. The Super Bowl, the most watched event on television, a game that brings Americans of every color, background, and political party together, a game where black fans cheer next to white fans, a game where teammates work together as one regardless of race, a celebration of diversity rooted in a common bond. But forget that. These privileged Hollywood entertainment types are really something. Beyonce didn't reference the Black Panthers to bring about some kind of positive change. She did it to get attention. Good for you. You made headlines. You, just like President Obama, Jada Pickett-Smith, Al Sharpton, and so many others, just can't let America heal. Keep ripping off the historical Band-Aid. Why be a cultural leader when you can play the victim, right? Guess what, Beyonce? White people like your music, too. White people buy your songs on iTunes, memorize your lyrics, and admire your talent and beauty. Little white girls want to be like you, just as little black girls do. But instead of recognizing that, you would rather perpetuate the great battle of the races. Your husband was a drug dealer. For 14 years, he sold crack cocaine. Talk about protecting black neighborhoods. Start at home. Those are my final thoughts. Thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless America. And take care. In case y'all didn't know it, the white woman is the devil. The Bible speaks of right. What that? What exactly? What that shows is that she is one hundred percent for her white man, because that's exactly what she was. She went and spoke for white man. She said, "Listen, I got this. I'll take care of this." And she went and spoke just like the white man. She so hide nothing. She, and another thing she did. I'm sorry. And another thing she did. She just did the uh, a, assault on her money. Because she mentioned about white people support you or not. That was a message to them. Stop supporting her. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So her and her husband got their little Negro wake-up call. So they said, why don't you let America heal? 
Heal. Let uh, America heal. What what does that mean? Heal. I mean, America is healed when black people are being beat up, jailed, hung, lynched, robbed. That's when America is acting perfect. During Black History Month, it's about remembering all the great black leaders that rose up. Doesn't that fit Huey Newton and Bobby Seale? Yes, they were great black leaders. Doesn't that fit Malcolm X? Yes. But they don't want that. They want you to remember Martin Luther King's nonviolence. Don't stand. She said it. Don't stand against white domination. How dare you? Did y'all hear when she that? said that? She said, she said, do not fight white supremacy. That's what she was really That's saying. That's what she was saying. That's exactly what she was saying. <sighs> okay. Let's open up with Jeremiah 6. So Black History Month is a farce. They want you to remember it only if you're talking about Martin Luther King. Or uh, what's the black guy that wrote a lot of punk books? Uh, he wrote books during that time. James Baldwin. Only talk about them too. Don't talk about nobody else. Don't talk about nobody. Give me Jeremiah 6, 13 to 15, please. The yeah, book, give me the safe Negroes. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 6 and verse 13. Now, some of y'all in, some of y'all in here might get offended. I'll just remind you what Christ said in Matthew 11 and 6. Blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. All right, Jeremiah 6, 13 to 15. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. That is the problem with our people. From the least of us to the greatest of us, all of our people are given to covetousness. That's why you'll be teaching and you'll have uh, black people, black and Latin people say, well, what are y'all giving to us? What do you have? You're teaching the Bible. We don't want to hear the Bible. Give us, give us, give us. All we can give to them right now is the word of the most high. That's what we have to, to give them. Like in a, where's the, who knows, what, you know what that scripture is where John the Baptist started doubting. And Christ said, tell John what thou seest. Matthew 11 and 2. Let me hear it. Okay. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples right. and said unto him, art thou he that should come? Art thou he whom, that, whom shall come? Is Christ, you the Messiah? Go ahead. Or do we look for another? Or should we look for another? Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which he do hear and see. Now listen good to what Christ says. The blind receive their sight. The blind receive their sight. Okay, that makes sense. He was healing. Go ahead. And the lame walk. And the lame walk. Okay, they were crippled. They were walking. Go ahead. The lepers are cleansed. The lepers are cleansed, meaning they had leprosy in their skin. He healed them. He cleansed them. Okay. And the deaf hear. And the deaf hear. Okay, they couldn't hear. Now they're hearing again. Christ healed their ears. Go ahead. The dead are raised up. The dead were raised up from the dead. He was doing these great miracles. Watch this. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And the poor have the gospel preached. Why didn't it say, and the poor got money and food and clothes? Why does it say, and the poor get the gospel preached unto them? Because that is the first thing necessary for any people. The mind must change before anything. All the other stuff is pointless. Here you are feeding a child molester. I'm feeding you, I'm feeding you, but he is still a child molester. Here you are feeding a thief or a murderer. I'm feeding you, I'm feeding you, but he or she is still a thief or a murderer. So read that last piece up again. The blind receive. The their, last one, the last and, one. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. It didn't say we're given money. I want you men to understand. Because sometimes we'll be out teaching and somebody say, you got two dollars. No, we ain't got two dollars for you. We got two scriptures for you. Then they go, oh, we don't want that. Then get to, get to stepping in. The first thing that needs to be done is the mind must change. Let's go back to Jeremiah 6 and 13 one more time. Jeremiah 6 verse 13. Come on. For from the least of them. The least of the Israelites. Even unto the greatest of them. Even to the greatest of the Israelites. Everyone is given to covetousness. Give me, give me, give me, give me. What do you have for me? Go ahead. And from the prophet, even unto the priests, everyone dealeth falsely. Then Jeremiah says the prophets and the priests all deal falsely. Go ahead. 
They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Now, I'm going to give you a point in history where our people did that also. 19, we just read it today, 1969, when uh, Carter G. Woodson helped establish um, Black History Week. Well, 1926, I'm sorry. Then 1969, 1970, Black History Month. That's, you're here, that's putting a Band-Aid on a gash, on an open wound. You got a bullet hole in you, and somebody puts a Band-Aid on you. That's not going to do nothing. That's what Black History Month is all about. And guess what? With that little thing we just saw, white America said, you know, Black History Month is garbage. We should have never allowed them that. Read on. Verse 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Were our people ashamed when we committed abomination? Go ahead. Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Uh -huh. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, give says me, the Lord. Give me Psalms 92 and 1. Psalms 92 and 1. So Black History Month is just putting, you're healing the, our hurt slightly, okay? Now, and white America just showed you what, what we just witnessed. <laughs> Listen, they'll only let you talk about certain black leaders, not the ones trying to overthrow white supremacy, not them. We want the ones that we, the Rodney King ones. Can't we all just get along? Those are the ones they want to hear. Give me that Psalm 92 and 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 92, verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. From there, give me real quick Psalms 137, 3 and 4. Psalms 137. The book of Psalms, chapter 137 and verse 4. How verse 3 and 4. Verse 3. For, they, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. So our people are carried away captive. We came here into slavery. And they require of us to entertain them. Sure, they want, they, everyone loves Beyonce singing. Beyonce, no, sing. Sing, sister, sing. But it's only for entertainment purposes. Don't make any political statements. They don't want that. Just stay in your place and make us laugh. Read it again. For there, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. They that wasted us, meaning destroyed our identity, our nationality. They what? Required what? Required of us mirth. Mirth means laughter. The Super Bowl. They, she said, well, white fans and black fans all get together and celebrate. Just like after 9-11, they were talking about not having uh, the football game. They said, no, you have to have it. That brings the country together. There is a purpose behind sports that most people don't realize. It gives the illusion of bringing races together. But in reality, it makes uh, white folks that much richer. Okay. Um, if I remember correctly, Whitney Houston, didn't she sing at one of the Super Bowls a while back? And they wanted her to sing that Star Spangled Banner garbage. And I think she chose Lift Every Voice and Sing or something like that. And they booed her. Right. She chose to sing the, what they call the, the, the Black the Negro, National right, Anthem. Right. The Black National Anthem. Right. And they was mad. White they America mad was that. mad. And Don't from then on, they were gunning after her. Right. And this is why a lot of, we, like, I, like I was saying at the beginning of the lesson, we give black entertainers a hard ride. When I say we, I'm talking about. Us Israelites, we give them a bad rap, but we have to under we have to understand where they are coming from. Now, I'm not talking about the coons. I'm not talking about them. And when I say coons, I mean the ones who have made their money, have married the white woman, and still don't give a die going about their people. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones who see certain things go on. And they may be quiet. Why? Because a lot of times their money might not be right. What do I mean by that? A lot of y'all in here got, got jobs. I told y'all, I always told y'all before, when I was in my jobs, I had three jobs to give out flyers. White man be right behind me. And the flyer said, the white man is the devil. And I could hear. Bishop gave the white man a flyer. Yeah, he did. He <laughs> took a look at it. And I got fired. 
I kept getting fired. I'm praying, saying, Lord, I don't understand why I keep getting fired. And the spirit kept saying, because you stupid. I was like, dang. And that's what happens. What happens when you stand up for anything, Esau comes after your money. For example, we discussed Marcus Garvey's, um, the UNIA. Uh, I can't remember what the acronym stands for. United Negro Improvement Association, that's it. And when they found out you belonged to that, Esau fired you. That's what they do. So that ha- when you look, there's, there's documentaries on it on YouTube. When you look at Marcus Garvey documentary, they discuss how many of his followers got fired during that time. It has not changed today. That's why I want us to understand. When we teach the Bible, brothers, when we teach the Bible, be mindful of what we are saying to people. Okay? Because they, are, may, they may not have the courage that many of us in here have to stand up yet. Many times our people need to sit back and observe first, okay, before you call them a coon, okay? Like, for example, Beyonce chose now to make this little political statement. Okay, two thumbs up. I give her a thumbs up for that, okay? I don't, I, I'll, I'll try not to be a Beyonce hater with her yellow hair and all that, which I don't like. But I understand. She's in the entertainment world. She got to walk her walk just like her and her husband does, all right? Um... I forgot what else I was going to say. Get me Lamentations 2. Something else I wanted to say about that. Oh, you had certain rich men during the time of Christ. Who remembers these certain rich men? There's two I'm thinking of. Joseph Arimathea was one, and there was another one that came to him by night. Nicodemus. Now, I want just those two for a reason. Nicodemus and Joseph Arimathea, when you read the Gospels about those two, Nicodemus came to Christ when? By night, he said he didn't want the Jews to see him. And he said, he, he admitted he was a believer, but secretly. Then you had Joseph, Ar- Joseph of Arimathea. He was another secret follower. But when Christ was crucified, they were, them two were so convicted, they said, we can't hide no more. We got to use our influence to get his body down and bury him. Joseph said, you can bury him in my tomb. I have a tomb. They had to make, that was their choice. You couldn't stand and force them and say you're a coon for not standing up years ago. The Philippians 2 says, let every man seek out his own salvation with fear and trembling. You men understand what I'm saying? So before you try to force somebody to do something, they got to be convicted in their heart first. Your job as a teacher is to guide the way, set the example, and leave it at that. That's what Christ did. Christ didn't say, Nicodemus, you are a coon for not standing up for me now. He didn't do that. So why do, why do we do it? We should not do that. That's between them and the Lord. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, okay, I don't think so, but we'll see. <laughs> Get me Lamentations chapter 2. Lamentations chapter 2. That's why some of you brothers, you be on the street and then you be worried when your boss walk by. Oh, shoot, there's my boss right there. Shh. <laughs> well, if you feel like that, how do you think these, these entertainers would feel? Okay. <laughs> they don't get it. Come America on. follows a particular um, philosophy. All of America follows a particular philosophy from one man, Cristobal Columbus. Cristobal Columbus. That's who they follow. What do I mean by that? Christopher Columbus, his philosophy was about gold. And he says, Gold is the most precious of all commodities. And he who possesses it possesses all that a man could ever want, something to that effect. The point in that is that white America in particular have taken up that philosophy and they wear it on their chest and on their mind and they go after it insatiably. And what that actually means is that their whole system is set on conquering and having control of all of the wealth everywhere. Regardless of where it is, we, in other words, white America must have it. And by them doing that, knowing that other people need those particular resources, America can get you to buck, dance, and do whatever you need to do in order to get a little bit of it. Y'all understand? That's the point, and that's how America deals. So when we were talking about how they cut off people's money, they know that's going back to Christopher Columbus. We keep them in line. We control their money. 
We'll start messing up Bill Cosby's money. We'll start messing with Beyonce's money. We'll start messing with Whitney Houston. That's how they do it. It's systematic. Every time you see one of us stand up, the first thing they start to do is attack their bank account. Right. Because Bill Bill Cosby, he lose hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars because of because of what happened, because of them allegations, them allegations that was made against him. Even though the allegation the, the allegations and them was proved it was proven that a lot of them is not true. You, you understand the man still lose a lot of money because of that. You understand? So they hit his pockets. Why? Because he he was a man. I know a lot of you all grew up watching Bill Cosby. I used to watch it in the islands too. The Huxables and all of that. He he was trying to put in black men mind that listen, you all pull up your pants, you all act right. You understand? And Esau, Esau don't like that. Same thing with Will Smith. Well, um, I think Will Smith Jada, and Jada, 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 and Jada, uh, his wife. She speak up against um how the how the Oscar is. You understand? They only choosing white people and so forth, and and everybody's against that now. But but these stars eventually they gonna a lot of them gonna speak up against the injustice that's going on amongst our people, and we as teachers. We can't teach what we're bringing up. We can't teach and ridicule them. Uh, you all always wicked, all these entertainers, this, that. No, we got to teach so they could get their mind right. right. You understand? And they could stand, if, even if they stand in the back and they help us from the back. You understand? They ain't got to be in the forefront. You understand? Because everybody ain't got to be in the forefront. You got soldiers, you got, you know, and, and the most I understand that Esau is going to, he's going to try to attack the finances, that's the first thing you're going to do. But, and, and that's when we're going to need people like that to come and help. All of you in this room, based on the article read earlier, are all radicals. Everyone in this room. If you stand outside of the so-called, or well, Esau's agenda, the so-called white man's agenda, you are officially a radical, you are a terrorist, you are, you are treason. They're going to put all those titles on you. And the question is, are you ready for that? That's the question. Because at the end of the day, I, I, this here, this is radical. Outside the norm, this is exclusive. We're peculiar people. Uh, by by, na by the nation, nationality-wise, nationally, we are a rad nation of radicals. Our laws are radical. Yeah. The Heavenly Father is radical. It's against this whole thing. So be mindful of that. And the term radical itself seems to have a negative connotation to it when it comes to our people. Because we hear that, we, I don't want to be radical. Radical only means to be outside of a uh, outside of a specific point. That's all it means. Right, so you're not so when, this world. When, right, exactly. When you say something like "think outside of the box," that's saying the same thing as radical. America says, "No, you are not allowed to think beyond the confines of what I told you to think. If you think beyond that, then he considers you radical, and we are not to be bent out of shape by hearing him say that because he is only saying that to keep us in in his control. In his box. In right. his box." Get Lamentations 2 and 16. Yes, Jonah. Y'all going to find out, okay, that uh, they will stigmatize you. They will label you for being in this truth. You will be, Christ said, we shall be hated of all nations. What they did to the Marcus Garvey movement, how they had that whole thing disrupted and sent him, uh, what is it, when they banished him from America, you have no idea what this country can do. They put him in exile. Read, look, check that. If you don't like to read, go on YouTube. There's videos. They'll show you what happened. Yes, Jonah. Yeah, you, uh, this is a really good example uh, that you brought up because last year when um, they were they were profiling people in the department store Barney's, mm -hmm. the black community stood up and said, wait, Beyonce and Jay-Z, they have a collection in there. Why aren't they saying nothing? The media, they touched on it, but they didn't cover it as heavy as they're covering what this is. Right, exactly, exactly. Y'all going to find out. And, and another thing, I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to hit you out of something. A lot of times, remember when Moses stood up when, when he killed the Egyptian? Then when he saw two Israelite brothers fighting and he broke up the fight, what did one Israelite say to Moses? Uh, they said, are you going to kill us too? Right, are you going to kill me too? Right, exactly. Now, when you read that, I remember, I remember a, somebody I know, somebody a while ago, he made the statement about the Israelites. He said, he said, I understand what you Israelites are teaching. This is a brother from Jamaica. 
He said, I believe what y'all are saying. He said, but I would never go out and do that and stand on the street. So I said, why not? He said, because if I get fired, this is what he said. He said, if I get fired, how many of you will have my back? And he said, when you examine the black leaders from the past, when things fell down on them, how many black people rallied behind to support them? That's what they said. And he said, perfect example. He said, Marcus Garvey was banished from the country. He said, Marcus Garvey had the largest movement of all black leaders. How many of them supported him when he was banished to Jamaica and had, was forced to go to uh, 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 England? He said, none, not one. He said, look at Malcolm X. Look at his family today. How many black people supported Malcolm X when he, Lord, when he got uh, jacked up and his family got uh, um, ridiculed and all that? He said, not one. He said, the only one, like I brought up last week, is Martin Luther King. He said, and that was white folks behind Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King's family, if you examine his family, they are good. Financially, they're good. Why? Because white people are behind them. He said, look at all. He said, you can name any black leader. That was somewhat what we use the term today, radical. Black people don't stand for them. He said, that's why nobody speaks up for black people. And he walked off. And I just paused and I thought to myself, I just looked and said, hmm. Hmm. Now, give me Lamentations 2.16. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 16. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. The Lord hath done that which he had de devised. He hath fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. So everybody hisses their teeth at us. They hiss their teeth at the fall of the Israelites. All nations were in cahoots with that. I want you to understand that. All nations. And when they give us some little money, it's meant solely to entertain them. It's not for us to use our financial resources to help unify our people. At, don't use it for that. That's not why we pay you, nigga. Just use your money, make us laugh, sing, and dance. That's it. We pay you to keep America healed. Exactly. Psalms 123. Right, right, right. Josephine Baker and Paul Robinson also were at both exiled and called communists. Black people didn't support them. They were whoop, whoop. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't see nothing. We, black people will become those three monkeys real quick. You know what three monkeys I'm talking about. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. That's black society. Cowards to the core, the majority of us. It all is a result of slavery. I understand. That's why, that's why the Bible is so important to build up the weak souls. There was a sister in here. You know who I'm talking about. Not here in New York. She was, well, actually, she was here. She went to North Carolina. She said, I'm going to get video shows for y'all out there in North Carolina. Then she said, I changed my mind. I can't do it. She said, the white people will have my address and do stuff against me. You know who I'm talking about. Fear. But that's all right. We didn't ridicule us. That's all right, sis. We know where it's coming from. We, we, we know. That they have, our people got to be built up. In this first, they have to be built up in this. Okay, Psalms 123. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but oh, yes. Bishop, uh, to back you up, what you were saying about black people don't 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 help black. Yeah, yeah I mean, even though when 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 they put us to death, when their so called a black leader show up, he's showing up to get paid, but not the family. But and the white folks, when they do something evil, white folks behind them pay their went do this, do that. They back you up a hundred percent. Because like Darren Wilson. Yep. Look, look at. I guarantee you, his family is not. Is, is they going. They paid his house off. Was it Darren? Make sure I got the right guy. Was it Darren? Yeah. Paid his house off. Yeah. Within a week. Yeah. Paid all his law. Uh. Uh. What is it called? Legal fees. Yeah. And then the black family's like you're saying. Nobody's doing nothing. I think one star stood up and paid uh, eight thousand to bury him. That was it. That was it. This is why black people don't stand up and don't and forget Puerto Ricans standing up for anybody. Yeah. You can forget that. We don't do our people don't do that. That's what slavery has done to us. 
That's why people, before we can get condemn anybody, we got to build them up first. They got to be built up in these scriptures. And white America pays attention to everything. Even the mere fact that we're saying that, right. white America pays attention to that. They said, we already know that, but the fact that you're saying it, you may cause three out of a million to wake up, and that's a problem. Right. Give me, hey, hey, give me the World Star Hip Hop video. There was a video on World Star Hip Hop with a white guy. And you're going to know that he watches the Israelites based on what he says in the video. Some of y'all have seen it. Now, mind you, I have 15,000 followers. 10,000 of them are black folk. They know I'm not racist. But let me get this straight. You will kill another black man for stepping on your shoes, for shoulder checking you, for shorting you $10 on the drug sale. For the utmost stupidest reasons, you will kill them without an instant of doubt and no shred of moral. But this white man has got their foot all on your fucking neck and you do absolutely nothing. I seen shit out there that says, we're going to ban Black Friday. That don't do shit. That don't do shit. What you need to look at is your community around you that is filled with money. That's what you need to attack. When, when, when black lives really matter, you'll have everybody in the NBA, you'll have anybody, everybody in the NFL. They won't step on a court or step on a field until something is done for their people. But they don't give a fuck. Okay? We've even heard people like, let, let's, look, let's look at the top elite of the black community. Okay? Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Jay-Z, Floyd Mayweather, and the list goes on how many people are billionaires and millionaires and don't do shit. Now, what I mean by don't do shit is, is what do they do for the black community? And I've even heard Floyd Mayweather go on record and say, why should I help anybody out? Because when I go broke, ain't nobody going to help me. But he'll sit there and defend this dude and pay $75 to see him fight, and he don't do shit for you. This motherfucker will go out and buy a $2 million watch, a $1.5 million car, and don't do shit for the black community. These are the people you need to boycott, and these are the people you need to hold accountable for the shit that's going on right now. And it's the truth, and I know you don't want to hear it from an Ofe, an Edomite, a white devil, but it's the fucking truth. Akon went to Africa and gave Africans electricity. What the fuck are these other people doing like Jay-Z? What are they doing? Now, if you take Jay-Z, Tyler Perry, and Oprah Winfrey and take their money, they can own a black-owned bank. But why won't they? Because they know the white man will step on their neck. Until you people buck up to the real shit and realize until you step back on the white man's neck, you ain't never going to fucking move forward. They had this shit back in the day, back in Oklahoma. They had Black Wall Street. But the white people got rid of that shit too. You need to start holding these people accountable. Okay? Every time you turn on a football game on Sunday, all you're doing is giving TV ratings and making... TV networks, millions of fucking dollars because you flicked on that TV. You bought that fucking baseball game ticket. You bought that football game ticket. You bought that basketball game ticket. What are these people that are, are doing for your community? Now, I say, I see somebody say, well, we're going to keep our black dollar and bring it back to our community. You don't own shit in your community because the Chinese, the Dominicans, and the fucking Indians own everything. So you can't even go in your own neighborhoods because there's nothing owned by black people in their own neighborhoods. So you can't make your dollar even strong. Now, Patty LaBelle did the bean pie shit, which proved right there. Now, whether it was buffoonery behind that or anything, but it still proved that the black dollar is strong. How many sales does she have? Nobody wants to eat no fucking nasty ass fucking bean pie. But the point behind it was support your own. And look what happened, how much money that brought in. in record sales in the weekend. Now just imagine, this is, what, this is what I see here. These drug dealers in these black communities, right? What do they do with their money? Do they open black-owned stores in their community? Absolutely not. They take that shit somewhere else. If you're going to do so, and, and the same thing with black women. What do they do when they go get their weaves? They go give their money right to the fucking Chinese. Why not own a salon that sells weaves? By black owned owners. Have a grocery store, black owned. Now, if Floyd Mayweather decided to go to a neighborhood and open up a grocery store, black owned, in a black community, how much would it cost him? It probably cost him two of them fucking watches he's got. Or Jay Z. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this shit? This shit where you're standing in front of police departments and blocking off highways, that don't do shit. 
because they're still fucking killing you in record fucking numbers. Now, when you see, I just can't go on. I, I, I think you understand my point here. To get this shit solved, you need to start with in your own community and hold your own people accountable. Because I'll tell you right now, if there was a white baby choking and a black baby choking, Oprah Winfrey would step on the black baby to save the white baby. And y'all know I'm fucking right. Y'all know I'm saying the truth. Oprah got enough money to go in 52 states and open 52 black-owned grocery stores and still have billions of fucking dollars. Same thing with fucking Tyler Perry. Same thing with Jay-Z, but they, do they do it? No, because they only care about themselves. So until you hold these people accountable for their actions, shit ain't never going to change. And that's the goddamn truth. Like I said before, you will kill your own people in a heartbeat, but you will let this white man step on your goddamn neck. Now, I know there's going to be people out there saying the white people, we all know the honkery, they're going to say, look at this race bait and asshole. He's going to start riots. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. I'm telling the absolute 100% honest truth, and people know it. So, to the people in the urban community, start opening black-owned stores. Take your drug money, because you need somewhere to wash that money. Open black-owned stores in your own community. And when you see fuckery going on in your community, put a stop to it. Y'all need to stop killing each other. That is the biggest thing. Fuck the police. They ain't never going to stop what they're doing because no one's going to do anything about it. You can sit there and pit me. You, you understand my point. This is my video that I've been trying to say. I've seen people, black people, come through slavery. Four million people slaughtered, beat, raped, killed, eaten up by dogs, hung from trees, beaten the next day, go out and pick cotton all day, overcome that shit. But you can't overcome now, in this day and age, the white man stepping on your neck. Y'all need to pull your shit together. Straight up truth. And I know y'all motherfuckers going to hate me for this video, but you know I still love you. And it's the God's honest truth. Start holding people that have billions and millions of dollars accountable for this shit. What you do is, is you go stand in front of Floyd Mayweather's gym by the hundreds. Motherfucker, you're going to take some of that money. You're going to do something for our fucking community. <laughs> well... And the reason I showed that video so much, because I know people don't want to hear it from us. So maybe if the there white go. man says you it, go. you got to let him do it. You got to co-sign he'll, he'll it. He'll say it. You know, he says maybe, maybe y'all believe not, that. Not ask a man to make some sense there. Um, in reference to the uh, clip that we just saw, y'all saw the uh, part in there where he said that Oprah Winfrey has enough money to buy a grocery store in every state across the country. And you must know that she knows that. And every all of us know that these things that that this cosigner white man just said, he didn't say something that she didn't realize. Let me tell you something about the black psyche in America. Black people are terrorized. We are a terrorized people. And what I mean by uh, if 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 you if you don't think on physical terror, we are intellectually terrorized. To the point where we will know what we could do and what we should do, but we will not do it. Perfect example. Bill Cosby wanted to buy NBC. And they went after him with all guns. And where's his support? So going back to the part about what you were saying about what the, what the Benjamite came to you and said, who would support me if I put myself on the limb? What other, with all the money that all of these people got, how come nobody else thought about, okay, Bill Cosby, he tried to buy NBC, he failed. Well, what about the rest of us? Let's go in there and get it. Nobody's going to make that, nobody's going to make that move because they already know what's going to happen. Captain Isaac, we just went through something like that in Virginia. You want to tell us briefly what happened? Where's the museum? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The, um, in, um, not Virginia, in Philly. Philly. The Less We Forget Museum. We were supposed to film a documentary. So we went out there, uh, we filmed and so forth. We put together the documentary. We sent it to the curator of the museum. When he looked at it. A black man. A black man. He looked at it. He said, he said no, you guys are, you guys are too, too hardcore, too straightforward. And he spoke to Officer Yan and he told Officer Yan, look, he get most of his money from Amalek, not our people. So he said, look, you don't understand these people. They're mean. They're going to come after me. They're going to shut me down. He said, look, I'll give you the ammunition, but I don't want to be seen holding the gun. Mm -hmm. 
That's exactly what he said. And that spirit is amongst 99.9 of black people. So that's what I'm saying to us, especially the teachers. Be mindful. Know where the state of mind where our people are at. You got to meet them where they're at to build them up. Build that, build that strength of character, that, 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 that sense of pride in who they are as Israelites, so that they'll take the courage and stand you go. for what is right. Exactly. And once they're built up, they will go and go after the man that you was talking about and say, listen, Amalek, you don't have to support him. Get the hell out of here. We'll take care of our brothers. There you go. Because this museum means something to all of us. Lest we forget museum, that's about us. Right. Well, I'm not right. going to let that go in the garbage. That's about us. Exactly. So we'll take care of you, brother. Don't worry. Exactly. Right, because um, these people that's in authority and so forth, amongst our people, they got a lot to lose. You understand? Like we, you might get a, you might get a regular small job paying paying um thirteen dollars an hour. You understand? If you lose that, you go go get another job. You understand? But some of these people, they got a lot to lose. You understand? So we got to. Build, it, build up their spirit and their mind where they can see, listen, you know, they got to meet the point where they're willing to lose their life, to find their life. That's what the scriptures say. You understand? That's the kind, that's how we got to build them up to do. You understand? As I say, a lot of us, we give up certain things and to think about it, the things we give up is, is, is minor to some of these things that some of these people going to have to give up to follow after Christ. You understand? It's minor. The things that we give up, it's minor. You understand? You got people that, you got some, some people that, that are going to try to repent, that are going to give up hundreds of millions of dollars. You understand? To follow Christ. And that's a decision that they're going to have to make. They're going to have to give up the love of this world. Like, where everybody loved them. Everybody loved them. Shouting their name. Now if they stand up and openly say, that I'm a Hebrew Israelite. What's that, that, that brother that did repented? He was a homosexual. He, Antoine Dodson. Yeah, I, um, I think he, he married and he got a kid now, right? Yeah, I think he married and he got a yeah, kid now. he got now. a kid now, yes. Yeah, yeah, but that brother stood up and he said, I'm a Hebrew Israelite and I'm repenting and I'm trying to follow after the most and they ridicule him. Because he was they, breaking America. He said, you're not healing America no more with you, what you're saying. Go ahead. Right. And, and what they did, they ridiculed that man. You understand? They ridiculed him and make him look, look like something wrong with him for, for saying, listen, I want a wife. I want a kid. You understand? So it's something big. We can't look at it as a little simple thing. And we got to know how to deal with our people that's in that world. You understand? We got to know how to deal with them. How many exactly. of y'all know the video that, that Deacon Malachi is talking about? The name of the video is IUIC video video called uh, Our People Have Been Seduced. That's the name of it. Very good video. You should watch it. Right. Get Lamentations. Uh, I mean, Psalms 123. Okay. Psalms 123, verse 3 and 4. Psalms 123 and verse 3. Watch this. This is what we want. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. We as a people are continually filled with contempt. People hate us. They despise what we teach, what we stand for. Go ahead. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at, are, are at ease. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease. Go ahead. And with the contempt of the proud. That's the white man. The contempt of the proud. Hatred of the proud. They despise this word. They despise the one true God. Give me Psalms 80, 4 to 6. Psalms 80. Now, Tyler, now back to Antoine Dotson. I just popped into my head that Tyler Perry, his handlers, I'm going to say it like that. His handlers had him offer Antoine Dotson millions of dollars. I forgot exactly how many to play a homosexual in his upcoming Christmas movie. All of that was to draw him back into the life that he was trying to leave. They, they, they hung the carrot in his face. Here's a million dollars. But you'll get it if you play a homosexual. But I'm trying to get away from you. Homosexual. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Forget all that Israelite stuff. Come out of that. Now, that's what happened. Now, y'all looking at, you say, how much they gave him? A million? Couple million. Yeah, a couple, couple million. million dollars. And some of you might not, because some of you might not be thinking deep like the, like the white man be thinking. Some of us have never seen a million dollars. Right. 
So he's dangling this couple of million dollars in front of the brother. And you think to yourself, wow, that's a lot of money just to solely get this man to turn back to his homosexual ways. White man said, I don't pay money for just for that. He said, I'm not only do I want him to go back, but everybody else who was in that lifestyle who was going to see Antoine turn around and repent, I'm also trying to mess that up as well. Right. Because Imagery. the minute he turned back, they're going to publicize it. Right. It's all about the image. the image That's it. that he's going to convey speaks more volumes than millions of dollars. That's the point. You understand that? It speaks volumes. Okay. Image is everything, brothers. So like uh, nobody gives a damn about Caitlyn Jenner. Nobody gives a damn about that. But Esau will use him as a an image before all the world to make a statement. The statement is more than the money that is given exactly. to him. Exactly. Who the hell cares about Bruce Jenner? The last thing I remember was him, he was on the Wheaties box many, many years ago. That was it. Y'all don't even remember that, right? <laughs> they don't know that. They don't know about that. Where we at? To run. Um, Psalms 80, verse 4. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Psalms 80, verse 4. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prey of thy people? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears. Thou feedest them with the bread of tears. That's why we're always crying. We're always mourning in a state of mourning. Okay? Black lives matter. Okay? Now, Esau, when you say black lives matter, just the term alone, all you're saying is that our lives matter. Or worth something, that's all. White society takes it like the white woman said, black lives matter more than others. See how they, that's how they twist it? If we stand up for self, we're saying, oh, that nobody else, nobody else matters. Nobody said that. But that's how white, there is a mind game they do with society. Right. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to show you that, that, that snake in the dress. That's what that woman was when she said that thing. Because out of her own things, she said white domination. So if she's saying white domination, what is she saying about everybody else that's dominated? That you're exploited, taken advantage of, suppressed, repressed? But how come the word games wasn't played at that part? She ran the word games with the other statement that you made, but when it came to domination, everybody just left it alone. Y'all all right? Okay. Go ahead. Read that. Verse 5. Thou feedest them with the bread of tears and givest them tears to drink in great measure. Right. So the most I was making sure that we get tears, that we are brought to the brink of terror so that we will cry and go before him and repent. Go ahead. Thou makest us a strife unto our neighbors. We are a strife unto our neighbors. Okay. That's why the white man was mocking and saying, you black people, you kill each other. You do this to each other. We are a strife unto our neighbors. Okay. That's why, even like Deacon Laba was saying, even in the Israelite community, that spirit of strife is still there. They've not repented, brothers. These other Israelites that you see on YouTube who are striving and fighting other camps, they have not repented of their sins at all. They are ju just like they are just like the comedic community that they're putting down. Because in the comedic community, they debate for strife. Uh, my information is greater than your information. I'm smarter than you. And they all want to get paid. Watch these so-called Israelites doing the same thing. They have not repented. of their, You won't hear repentance come out that mouth. You, you hear the white man as a devil all day long. Isn't that obvious what the bishop is saying? You can see it. Just look at them. Hey, if you if you if you cooking on the Sabbath, buying and selling on the Sabbath, and allowing females to wear pants is no repentance there. None you understand? Absolutely. Because that's part of repentance. When you learn this truth, you shouldn't be buying and selling on the Sabbath no more. You understand? You should have that understanding. You understand? When you sisters repent, you're also so, supposed to stop dressing as a man. All right? That's what repentance is about. You understand? Let me ask you a question. Because I know um, these debates, the elder has been accused of being a destroyer of black people. He's worse than Darren Wilson. That's what I've heard, I've seen. Let me ask you a question. What, is the, what are the wages of sin? Death. Death, right? So sin is something that kills our people, right? So the, what are the rules of the Sabbath? What are the rules? We're not to do what? Buy. So when you invite your people to a cookout on the Lord's Sabbath day, what are you giving them? Death. Okay, so apparently there's more than just Darren Wilson in Israel, obviously. Because Sabbath, the Sabbath day is to be kept holy. And you're not supposed to buy, 
So, and don't hear nothing about with a priest. A burger and hot dogs is not a sacrifice to the Lord. That's not in the Bible. Do not fall for that. That's why there's much obesity in Israel too. Much obesity as well because Israel don't want to keep no laws. They will, they will sit there and curse you out, curse the white man out. That's why weeks ago I brought out when the ungodly curse of Satan, they curse their own souls. That's why Christ said, ye of your father the devil and the works of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. I said before, Negro Esau is the reflection of a wicked Negro. That's what he is. That's why he says, I'm going to put him up over them. Because they act just like him. I'm going to put him over them. I'm going to send y'all know that. Keep that in mind. You got Jake's. If they had the power of Esau, they would do far more damage to this world than any nation on the earth. Don't curse Esau out. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you an example. Esau does a lot of murdering, right? Not much murder. He kills our people. Horrible is tragedy. Yes, we understand this. You know, within 10 years, our sisters killed 13 million babies in abortions? 13 million! Not faulting them, because it's ignorance and sin. We understand this. But I'm giving you a, a, a schematic. Even in the black on black, it's astronomical odds between black on black versus police violence. Blacks do more damage to each other than Esau has done. And let me, let me uh, one more thing. In the scriptures, we, we um, no, about Chirac. Chirac is horrible. Do y'all know that Chirac was Jerusalem before? You know how much killing and death was going on amongst black folks in Jerusalem alone? So we lost the kingdom in the first place. From, from the, they were killing the prophets over and over again. Raping each other, killing each other's brothers, adultery, lying, stealing. That was black on black crime all through the Bible. When you read about Christ walking on the earth, he wasn't being attacked by Esau. He was being attacked by his own. The prophets are being attacked by their own people. Jeremiah by his own people. Paul by his own people. A gang of Negroes were plotting to kill him. You know, and guess what Paul did before that point? Guess what Paul did when um, Jake tried to kill him, that gang? What did Paul do? Anyone know what he did? He went and got his nephew to tell the cops just what you saw. Because his nephew was hearing it. He said, go tell the, the centurion what you heard. And they had a police escort him out of the city. The soldiers. But no, Paul sold out. That's the devil. Don't allow him. He saw he should have took prayers up. And said the name 80 million times. No, that's not what he did. He went and told the cops on Jake. That's what he did. Because Romans 13 says that the powers that be on are a terror unto good works. I'm not seeing any Israelites keeping the commandments of faith of Christ dying yet by police violence, or am I? Most of the Jakes being killed are Jakes in the world to force Israelites in the world to come out of it. That's what I'm seeing on TV. I don't recall Trevor Martin saying, I repented. Mike Brown wasn't repent. Eric Garner's wife said, yeah, he's dead. Now we can't celebrate, eat them um, Thanksgiving and celebrate Christmas no more. That brother was in sin. She ain't revealed why the most I took him out. Now, I'm not glorifying their deaths, but I want you to just think we cannot be rabble rousers or demagogues in Israel where we try to thrive on the emotions of our people. Yeah. Don't feed on their emotions. He saw the devil. He saw the devil. And provide no solutions. Hate the police. Okay, then be the police. <laughs> You're not going to do it. I hate um, the education system. But take your kid out of school. <laughs> not doing that either. So you're wasting time. That's what I was mention before. If you are, uh, have a leader that's not looking to change the minds of the people and establish Israel institutions, they are wasting your time. And that, will, that statement alone pissed many people off who are, I said it before, rabble rousers and demagogues who will not provide solutions but will provide fuel to enrage the emotions of a people who don't keep these laws. That's what you're dealing with. Be mindful of those yeah, spirits in this, yeah. in this truth. Exactly. Psalms 80 and 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 80, verse 6. Thou makest us a strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. So Esau sits back and laughs. You don't think Esau... Esau set up YouTube to monitor everyone. That's what he does. So now you got Israel. The truth is coming up, raising up. Esau goes, hey, hey, Bob, do you see these idiots over here? Look at them arguing with each other. He said, listen to their phone calls now. They, these guys really hate these guys over here. And this other group over here, they ain't right either. Look at them cursing and plotting over here. Esau sees it all. Even when you examine. Now, this is on a greater level. Think back what happened with Malcolm X. Was not Esau monitoring the phone calls in the nation of Islam? He knew who was saying what. He knew when the assassination attempt was going to go. Look at the documentaries. Mm -hmm. and Right, and it's in the movie. It's in the movie. 
Esau sat back and was laughing. and said, look at these niggas. You would have thought Malcolm would be the one to raise up and save them. He said, nah, they're gonna get taken up. He's going to get taken up by this group right here. It's the same thing today with the Israelites. The same thing. These other camps that you see out here sowing hatred, they have not repented of their sins. And Esau is laughing because they're using the Bible to heap fuel on an already growing problem that's within them. That emasculated black man. By the way, that's today, today's lesson. The name of today's lesson. I forgot. Huh. Okay. So, society's mad about what Beyonce did. They don't want us to remember great black leaders. They can listen to us talk about Martin Luther King. They can even listen to us talk about George Washington Carver, who the peanut. Remember the peanut. Don't mention that they castrated him. No, don't, don't, Nick, don't mention that part. And that they kept him from black people, that they kept him housing, I'll use the word imprisoned, with a white family so that he could create for them and get patents for them and become billionaires for them. Don't mention that part of George Washington Carver, though. Don't mention that. Just say that he created the peanut. That's all we know. He created the peanut. So, Black History Month. You could talk about Martin Luther King Jr. You could talk about George Washington Carver. Don't talk about Nat Turner, though. Don't talk about Denmark Vesey. Don't even dare talk about Gabriel Prosser. We don't want to hear them names. Don't talk about Marcus Garvey. Don't talk about Malcolm X. Don't talk about Toussaint La Overture. Don't talk about them. Don't talk about Huey Newton and uh, Stokey Carmichael and uh, Bobby Seale. Don't talk about them. Well, they just showed you not to talk about them with the Super Bowl thing. Mm -hmm. So, now that we've awakened to the truth of God, we've come to the truth that we're the Israelites. We say, wow, we are this people. We are this people. We got to add some names to the list during Black History Month. We got to talk about great black leaders, and we got to make the world so mad, and they're going to get mad. We got to talk about great black leaders like Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David. See, there you go trying to buy NBC. Solomon, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Peter, James, and John, the Apostle Paul. Great black leaders. How can I forget Mordecai and Esther? Mm, 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 mm. We got to make societies going to get mad, brothers. Sister, understand what you're into. Christ said everyone's going to hate y'all. As long as you hide this truth, they're going to love you. But when you start to speak it, they're going to hate your guts and live it. Not just speak it, thank you. Right. And live it. The world will hate your guts. Give me that in Matthew 24. Please. Bishop, you said you have to mention these men, right? Yeah. We are these men. That's what's going to make them afraid. The Malachi is one of you. That uh, Jeremiah is one of you. You understand what I'm saying? We are this man, so we're going to make them mad. You understand? We're going to make them mad. Give me that. Give me that, Matthew 20. Wait, for, propaganda. Can we look up the word propaganda? Let's look up that word. Propaganda. That word, propaganda. I don't even know how to spell it. P-R-O something. Propaganda. <laughs> Watch what it says. It says derogatory information. Especially of a biased or misleading nature. You know what? There was much propaganda about Malcolm X, much propaganda about Nat Turner, much propaganda about Jesus Christ. Huh? And the Panthers. Who was the one they shot up uh, in his bed? Was it Bobby? That was uh, Fred know? Hampton. Fred, thank you. Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton. Lit, the brother was how old? He was 26, 25? 20. Like 21, 22, he was young, very young. In his bed, sleep, and the cop shot out from the outside, lit him up while he was asleep. They said, oh, he shot first. But they said, but why are all the bullets, when they examine the walls, coming from the outside in? Propaganda, they, they, they slandered him and said he was this. And you had black people go, some black people, not all. Yeah, Bob, uh, Fred Hampton, he wasn't right. Remember we saw some time ago uh, about Malcolm X, like it is, Gil Noble. He said, what kind of man is, he said he believed all that he had read about Malcolm X until he heard him for himself. 
You even had one of his bodyguards. He said, what kind of man is this who doesn't know his own last name? Propaganda. All kind of slanderous information went are, out. Are y'all getting this? The reporter was was basically given his uh, his his mind state before he was enlightened by Malcolm's teachings. And he was saying that he looked at him like, man, didn't know his own name. He was crazy, this, that, and the other. So he was basically giving you an insight, a, 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 a viewpoint of the Negro's mind in America. Exactly. Propaganda. You had... Uh, What's the name of that newspaper that came to us in 1088? Vice. Vice. And said, these guys is in a basement. Look at it. It's filthy. It's disgusting. They are no threat to anyone. Did I mean, total ridicule. The whole thing. Propaganda. And yet Israelites go, oh, look what they said about them. They said, but that, that didn't work. Let's get some more. Oh, Nathaniel Israel, he's, he's arresting innocent men driving by and shooting them. And black people... Yeah, see, I told you it wasn't right. Propaganda. Propaganda. What did it say? Can we look at it? Let's go back to propaganda again. Derogatory information, especially of a bias or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. So now, Sirach 28, please. Sirach. Propaganda. The book of Sirach, chapter 28. In verse 14, a backbiting tongue hath disquieted many. Propaganda. And we, When we read that, we usually use it in uh, context of one-on-one, -on -one, how somebody would speak against another. But propaganda does the same thing. But it's on a national level, a, a, a media level. Read it again. A backbiting tongue hath disquieted many. And driven them from nation to nation. I'll give another example. Like when you talked, you said earlier about Bill Cosby. How many black people ran with that propaganda? He did it. He did it. He's guilty. When it quieted down, on, you, know what, you know what they did? They hired a black comedian who shall remain nameless to go out on stage and make a joke about Bill Cosby being a rape, racist. And they used that platform to stir it up again. And this is a no-name comedian. Nobody even, I, don't, I couldn't tell you his name if, it's some, if I saw his name on my phone, I wouldn't recognize it. But they used a no-name brother to ridicule Bill Cosby and they built on that. They said, see, it didn't come from us black people. It came from your own black brother right there. That's propaganda. That's how white society gets down. You pit one against another. Right, so that way you'll never trust each other. That's the same thing. Listen good what I'm saying in the Israelite community. Read it again, Captain. A backbiting tongue hath disquieted many and driven them from nation to nation. Strong cities hath it pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. A backbiting tongue hath cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labor. So that goes for women too. Some women have gone through backbiting propaganda oh she's this oh she's that and to deprive them of all the good works that they had that almost happened to our sister Susanna but the Lord had Daniel stand up on her behalf all praises okay what verse you at captain that was verse 15 read verse 16 whoso hearkeneth unto it shall never find rest you brothers and sisters that listen to propaganda that listen to lies it says Whoso hearkeneth unto it shall never find rest. Go ahead. And never dwell quietly. And shall never dwell quietly. Read on. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bone. There's something when we're children, we're, we're taught to recite something when people call us names. Sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt us. God says that's not true. Words will hurt. Read that again so we can see that pattern precept again. Read that verse. But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bone. Y'all see that? You know what the tongue can do? The tongue can get people killed. The tongue, if you ever seen Rosewood, anybody see the movie Rosewood? Mm -hmm. A tongue, propaganda, got the whole town of Rosewood destroyed. You had one white woman say, he raped me. The whole town set on fire. Propaganda. Lies. Okay. Don't think it cannot happen today. 
that's that got uh Emmett uh Emmett Till. Till put to death. Okay. Remember when Herod said, or was it no Pontius Pilate said about Christ, I find nothing wrong with this man. You had black Israelites saying, crucify him, or you're not a friend to Caesar. Crucify him and got all the black Israelites to chant, kill him, kill him. Propaganda. Misleading, derogatory information. Read it again, Captain. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Go ahead. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. So Sirach here says many have fallen more by the tongue, the things you say, the lies you put forth. Go ahead. Well is he that is defended from it. That's why, brothers, sisters, we cannot get caught up in propaganda. Don't. That's why when we hear something, don't run with that. Don't. I don't care what the media says. I don't care what the Israelite camp says. Don't run with it. Go ahead. Well is he that is defended from it and hath not passed through the venom thereof. It's poison. Go ahead. Who hath not drawn the yoke thereof, nor hath been bound in her bands. Come on. For the yoke thereof is a yoke of iron. And the bands thereof are bands of brass. The death thereof is an evil death. The grave were better than it. It shall not have rule over them that fear God. Wait a minute. Wait. Read that precept one more again. It shall not have rule over them that fear God. If you fear the one true God, brothers and sisters, propaganda, lies, derogatory speech will not rule your life. And we always give sisters a hard time about gossip, but guess what? Men gossip too, sometimes worse than women, okay? And the Bible says what? One more time. It shall not have rule over them that fear God. So if all of us in here fear the one true God, we cannot let propaganda, lies rule our tongue, rule our lives. Go ahead. Neither shall they be burned with the flame thereof. Such as forsake the Lord shall fall into it. But if you forsake the Lord, you're going to fall into derogatory speech. You're going to fall into propaganda. Go ahead. And it shall burn in them. And it shall burn in them. Go ahead. And not be quenched. And that fire will not be quenched in you. You run around with something you heard. I heard this or I read such and I believe it. Oh, drop dead and die. <laughs> From there. From there, give me Hosea 5.15. Hosea 5.15. We've read this many times, many times. So when I looked at the Beyonce thing that she did, um, the man said we have to hold these black stars accountable. Not really, and I'm going to tell you why. Because just like the Negro or Latino in a ghetto who's on a low state, whose mind has not changed, you have rich Israelites whose minds have not changed. They're at the same, they're, in the terms of God, they're at the same level. They're in a, an, an ignorant state of mind. So before you can hold anybody accountable, they first got to hear the word of God first. Read. Hosea 5.15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. And now get me 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. Again. Again. We must be merciful with our people who do, don't, don't assume everybody has heard this truth. They have not. We have to, we have a job to do, brothers and sisters. We have a job to do to teach the gospel and set a good example. Christ said in, in John, hereby shall men know you're my disciples if you what? If you love one another. Our people are a visual people. They need to see this thing. So before you bring down that mallet of condemnation, stop first. Stop. Wait before you condemn people. Have they heard the word? Okay. Christ said, I came not to condemn but to save men's lives. That's what he came for. So that's how we're supposed to be. Remember the Apostle Paul, all of you who have been reading the Bible, the Apostle Paul, you don't think he heard the gospel? He heard the gospel. Did he accept it? No. It took a miracle from God to knock that dude off the horse to make him change. And when he changed, he was greater in works than all the apostles. Okay. So, although 
he hears today, he or she may not change until tomorrow. You got what I want? First Timothy six seventeen. First Timothy six and verse seventeen. This goes for the Nicodemuses amongst us, the Joseph of Arimathea's, the Beyonces, the uh, 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 what's her husband's name? I'm sorry, Jay Z's. Go ahead. Charge them that are rich in this world. Charge them that are rich in this world. Come on. That they be not high-minded. That they be not high-minded. This is why the Most High revisits, allows our people to get what we call in joke, the nigga wake-up call, as Paul Mooney says. Who is it, nigga? Wake up. You might have been living your life. You think you're above your people. You're not. And this is what Paul is reminding us as teachers to be mindful of. Read it again. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to You know enjoy. why you get high-minded? Not only do you have uh, 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 fortune, but you have fame. People chanting your name, in your mind, you could, you, you could shoot somebody in the face and get away with it. No, you can't. Ask OJ. He was America's... Now, I'm not saying he did it, because I don't know if he did it. Um... <laughs> But my point is, my point, let me not forget my point. Don't be, fame and fortune will make someone of our people high-minded, okay? And they are told not to get involved in certain things. They are told that by their handlers. Don't get involved in it. Marry this type of a woman. Don't marry that. Remember we read an article some time ago about stars, the basketball star. Don't marry a black woman. Who's the brother that punched his wife in the face on the elevator? I forgot his name. Ray Rice. And you know, the, the handlers, the handlers is the slave master. Didn't we tell you, niggas? Didn't we tell you don't marry that type of a woman? You're messing with our investments now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. These things happen, okay? So now we use these examples. Like, you may hear me often speak about stars. I'm not, I don't, people go, oh, do you hate? No, we don't hate them. We're using their name as an example because that's who everybody knows. We're just using it for examples. Like, Come on, Captain, one more time. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works. So we are to command the rich of our people that they do good, that they what? That they be rich in good works. That they be rich in good works. Come on. Ready to distribute. What's that again? Ready to distribute. Ready to distribute, meaning help your people. Now, he's not talking about ready to distribute in the world. Paul is saying be ready to distribute in Israel. That's what he's telling. That was the message for Nicodemus. That was the message for Joseph of Arimathea. That was the message for Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus, because you mentioned him earlier. The reason I didn't mention him because Zacchaeus was rich, and he publicly acknowledged he was a follower of Christ. So that's why I didn't want him. I wanted them secret ones first. Zacchaeus said, if I have robbed anybody, I will restore unto them fivefold or something like that, he said. I can't remember exactly. But he said, I will restore it, Lord. And you had the scribes and the Pharisees mad because Zacchaeus was a publican. A publican is what, brothers? A tax collector. Matthew was a tax collector. That's like working for the IRS. Israel hated the tax collectors, the, uh, the internal revenue service. I hate them too. <laughs> but that's the brother's job. You can't hold that against them. Oh, you can't be saved because you work for the IRS. That's not in the Bible, brothers. We can't have those Negro, I call it Negro because it's just dumb. Those dumb thoughts, okay? You had Luke, they called him the beloved physician. He was a doctor. What? Doctors can't come into this. He's a, he took an oath, brother. Nah, my brother. I, I, black people, stop, stop. Be quiet. Be quiet. That's what I'm saying. Y'all running around watching these other these YouTube Israelites? Stop. You're going into the abyss of madness. You're going to start utter stupid things and hold back the kingdom from our people. That's why the Lord can't use them. He cannot use them because they're just too too wicked, too evil, too vile. They can still repent, though. They can repent. Where were we at, Captain? Verse 18. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Willing to communicate. Was that it? Yes, sir. So now, 
We call many the wealthy of our people who have not helped our people sellouts. We got to be be careful of that. Be careful of that before you start call, throwing around these titles and tag names. Repentance is not just for the broke of our people. Let me say it again. Repentance is not just for the broke of our people. When Christ said, give me that Matthew 5 and 3, this is what Christ said. Because repentance was for Matthew, the tax collector. Repentance was for Luke, the beloved physician. Repentance was for Joseph of Arimathea. Repentance was for Nicodemus. Those were wealthy men. This is what Christ said about them. Matthew 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Did he say blessed are the poor in pockets? What did he say? Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's what Christ is looking for. The poor in spirit are the Israelites who lost their identity, their culture, their heritage, their language, their land. They, we, we are the poor in spirit. That's from the lowest of us to the greatest and most richest of us. Repentance is for the Oprah's too, brothers. You might not like the sister, but repentance is for her too. Repentance is for Michelle Obama. And for Obama, if he's an Israelite, repentance is for all our people, no matter how vile a life they have lived in their life. I want you men to understand that. Until the Most High closes the door, the door is still open. And as teachers, our job is to be examples to bring them into this truth. Y'all, you men understand that? Yes, sir. Oh, I really pray so. Can we look? I want to look up two words uh, over here. You brothers, right here. I want to look up two words. I want to look up the word effeminate. Then I want to compare it with the word emasculate. I want to look up those two words. All right. Here is effeminate. Of a man having or showing characteristics regarded as typical of a woman. Unmanly. Synonyms are womanish. Uh, well, how do you say that next word? Effet. Foppish, foppish, I never heard of that word, foppish. Unmanly, feminine, okay, click more. Okay, okay that's effeminate, having, typically of having woman, woman qualities, right? Everybody see that? Can we look up emasculate? Okay, emasculate. It says, make a person, idea, or piece of legislation weaker or less effective. Synonyms, weaken, enfeeble, deliberate, erode, undermine, cripple, Deprive. Okay, deprive a man of his male role or identity. Which one do you think blacks and Latinos fit? First, effeminate or emasculate? Emasculate. Because as a nation, as a people, we all, the men especially, deprive a man of his male role or identity. That fits us as a popular, as a race. That's a Negro. That's a Negro. That's a Latino. We are emasculated. That's like being castrated. That definition not only fits emasculate, it fits Negro. You look up Negro, you get that definition there. Exactly. So, to emasculate a man is to castrate him, to deprive him of his virility, ability to reproduce. He can't, he can't help himself. He can't help kids. He can't help his woman. He can't help his race. So if a man can't take care of his kids, he can't take care of his wife, you expect him to help the community, to help the race, to help the impossible brothers. You got to start from the beginning. He got to start again. That's why there is no revolution without an evolution of the mind. It has to start up here in the mind, in our spirit, okay? So to emasculate a race, a population of people is to deprive them of their identity, all right, their culture, their language, their heritage. We often believe we're free. Yet we here in America, we have no country of our own, no laws we pass. We don't pass no laws, brothers. We don't collect no taxes. We might pay taxes, but we don't collect taxes. You know you in a power seat when you collect, when people bring tax to you. That's when you know you got power. Right, that's when you know you are free. Like it tells you, and Christ said that. Of whom do the Gentiles, um, how does it go? Of whom did the Gentiles take weight, uh, pay tribute? Of their own people or of uh, strangers? Of the, of the strangers. I mean, in other nations, he said, then are the children free. You're free. Like Solomon, when Solomon was collecting taxes from the nations, we was free. When David was collecting taxes from the nations, we was free. Right now, we not we ain't collect. Ain't nobody bringing us tribute for nothing. We are giving tribute. 
Can you say it on the mic? We can't even imagine what that feels like. Just we sitting up in here and the nation's just bringing in, bringing in their forces. Mm-hmm. Here, here you go. Here, here. Take this, take this. Exactly. Take this. If you ever see the movie The Ten Commandments. That's you exactly see, what I'm talking there's about. There's a scene where Ethiopia yep. and the other nations come to Pharaoh yep. and bring tribute to him. Bringing silk, all kinds of stuff. Gold. Oh, exactly. Rubies, diamonds, everything. Exactly. We don't even control our own education. Understand that. We have no army, brothers. We have no military, no community that we police, and we have no family that we guide. I'm going to say that part again. We have no family that we guide. Can we get that in Genesis 18? That's where we got to start, brothers. Let's look at our forefather, Abraham, just for a moment, just for a second. Genesis 18, verse 18. The book of Genesis, chapter 18 and verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely be, become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. Y'all see that? Was that it? And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So you brothers want to get blessed? We got to walk in the footsteps of our forefather Abraham. It starts with your family. Before you can deal with the congregation, with the nation. It starts with your family. Give me that in 1 Timothy 6 uh, and 5, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, oh, 3. 1 Timothy 3 and 5. 3, three and, and 5, five. I'm sorry. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, That's it. how shall he take care of the church of God? So God is telling us as Israelite men, you want your manhood back? You start at home. That's where you start. You got to get your mind first, then it starts with getting your wife in order getting your children in order. That's that's your little kingdom. Then from there, then you can deal with the church. And that church he's talking about is not just this room. The church represents the entire nation of Israel. Let's prove that. Give me that in Acts 7. <coughs> you know what I want about the church in the wilderness? <coughs> what verse is it? 37 down. About Moses of, being in the wilderness. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 37. This is is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. That's it. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Was that talking about a little group of 200 people, brothers? That's talking about a nation of people. The church is talking about a nation. We've been so Christianized. When we hear the word church, we think, oh, that's that little group right over there. No, no, no. God used the word church. Church means assembly. And it's talking about an assembly of a nation of people. That's what it's talking about. Everybody understand that? We really got to become born again because we've been so Christianized, so churchized. We have lost the meanings of words. A church, that's that little group over there that with those four walls on Mount Vernon. No, no. The church is a nation, brothers and sisters. Let's go back. Give me Genesis 14, 14. I heard an unrepentant Israelite say that when we teach young men to get jobs, to get work, to take care of themselves, that that is oppression. I heard an unrepentant Israelite man say that when we tell women that they must not dress as men in pants, that that is oppression. I'm like, well, what Bible are these people not reading? Hmm. That's the one with that black highlighter. Genesis 14, 14. Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, Listen he, good. he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Let me show you how, Abra- how bad Abraham is. See, we really don't even got a glimpse on our forefather Abraham, the patriarch Abraham. Not only did he have his house in order, he, had, he trained 300 people servants that he had to fight he said they took my nephew lot you 300 men get your weapons we're going to go get my nephew y'all see how bad they, they don't show that on tv how there was a great slaughter that abraham did against these men for taking for taking lot that's how god god liked that type of spirit that's why he didn't get mad at moses when moses killed the egyptian he said i like that spirit right there now i'm not saying 
Play anybody didn't run. I don't kill nobody. I'm not saying that. I said God like that spirit. That's all I'm saying. Ha! <laughs> I know some people go crazy. Uh, to emasculate, what did that emasculate mean? Can we put that back up again? Make a person, idea, or piece of legislation weaker or less effective. Two, deprive a man of his male role or identity. Man. So to emasculate our people is to imprison them at a disproportionate rate. Keep them in poverty, with bad living conditions, poor education, and with bad health care. Give me Deuteronomy 2848. Let me show you something about uh, being imprisoned. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The word I want us all to look at is the word until. You might say, well, why are you focus on, why not yoke of, or iron? Why until? Because that word until speaks volumes. We would have the yokes of iron on our necks until when, brothers? Destroyed how? Mentally, spiritually, emotionally. That's a worse bondage than the bondage of shackled chains. When we are shackled in chains, we are together. We know our identity. We know who we are. We know who our enemy is. When the chains came off, they said, take the chains off. They are fully destroyed now. They ain't going nowhere. Why is it worse to be the latter than the former in reference to um, chains? In the physical, you still, well, in the physical chains, meaning because your mind has not been conditioned to the effect of what the chains are supposed to do. So the chains is just a physical thing, but still your mind is still in the mode of freedom. And because of that, that's a threat. The, the man can't sleep. You're killing his hogs. You're doing his, his man he can't get any sleep. He said, man, this is terrible. And anything that is detrimental to the oppressor is, 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 is actually a uh, benefit to you. Y'all follow me? So in the, in the situation where your mind now is in the slavery mode, he could get some sleep and you will never even think about going for your freedom, even though the chains are not there. And not only that, you will teach others to also resist uh, going, striking a blow for your freedom. That's how dangerous it is to have your mind messed up. So in other words, when you're in chains, you will always fight. You will to always be fight. Free. Exactly. That's the reason for the chains. When the chains came off, you have the illusion right. of freedom, but you're not. You're and not you will never fight. Right. But you won't even you won't even look. You don't even want freedom. Right. And you will encourage others to not want freedom as well. So they, it's a double whammy. But you know what? Watch this. Do our people think they free? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that, that's heavy. They that's think heavy. they're free, but that's they're heavy. not. They have Damn. the illusion of freedom. The illusion of freedom. That's more dangerous. That is super dangerous. Than when they had the yokes on. Mm. <laughs> Bishop, you remember the class you had when you when you saying that uh, 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 so-called so-called black American where they have to go we sign if we what is that 15 years 20 years for the, oh, the that, that right alone country. show you not free right that alone show you still in the chain exactly that's, that illusion again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's an example of a perfect the perfect illusion here we are we're the only people that have to every 25 years get re, have our rights amended so that we can vote and here we're talking about something we free right exactly so mental and emotional bondage is far worse, brothers, than iron shackles and chains. Far worse. Isaiah 51, verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. So our sons have fainted. Fainted from what? Their identity. They have been emasculated. Okay? So we fainted from the truth of God's word. Fainted from the truth that we are the Israelites. We're like what? They lie at the head of all... No, no, no. Read it again. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. Mm -hmm. as we a, a, meaning we hang on the corners. As a wild bull in a net. Now let me tell you something about that wild bull in a net. Wild bull cannot be controlled. 
Anytime young black or Latin men look for a role model, any kind of what we would call biblically a savior or messiah, what does white society do? Right, destroys the image. Pow, kill him. The only role models left to us then are role models given to us on television. Like, right, you said homo, but I'm going to give you another one. What's the Edomite and Godfather, what's his name? Robert De Niro. Scarface. Uh, Tony, Montana. Tony Montana. Is that his name? Uh, Al, Pacino. Al Pacino. Yeah, I mean, in the character. Yeah. How many black and Latin men idolize that guy? The only role models allowed us are the most violent or most homosexual. We got those two. But when it comes to someone that stands up for any type of righteousness, or, uh, uh, let's not even give it that much oomph. Some kind of, uh, give me a word, integrity, morality, they humiliate them, like with Bill Cosby, humiliate him through the, mu through the news. Marlo, not, yeah, Martin, where they killed him, Malcolm killed him. Ma Ma Think of any of them. They somehow got rid of them, humiliated them. They dis leaving us nothing but TV personalities to look up to. Who's our role model? Let's look cut on the TV. Click, click. Oh, look, Medea. Oh, yeah, that's a role model. Woo! Go ahead, girl. The hell is this? Tony Montana, there you go look at my little friend. I don't know if that's what he says. Something like that. Say hello to my little friend. Something like that. So, because of that, we are wild in a system. We are uncontrollable. Read that again, Captain. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. As a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The fury of the Lord is Deuteronomy 28. We're full of it. Go ahead. The rebuke of thy God. That's the proof. The fury of the Lord is the rebuke of thy God. Go ahead. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. We are afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. We're, we are afflicted and drunken with philosophies out here. Lies out here. Go ahead. Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord. And thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people, behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. So we ain't going to drink Deuteronomy 28 no more as we are repenting. Go ahead. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. God's going to put Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 16 on the other nations that afflict us. Starting with the white man. Go ahead. Which have said to thy soul. Now this what we're about to read here, brothers and sisters, this is the emasculated black man, which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over, and thou hast laid thy body as the ground. That's the emasculated black and Latin man. Now, we don't literally go, but you know what? There was a time where we literally did that back in slavery. Now we do that metaphorically, spiritually. We let white society tell us anything. We go with anything they say. We, know, we don't buck up against them, okay? When we march on the streets about Black Lives Matter, then at the same time we go celebrate Christmas where a white man's gonna give our children gifts. We, we march and protest against shooting, police shootings of black children, black youth, then we go celebrate Thanksgiving, how the white man destroyed America. Yes? I was gonna say that in that whole movement, that Black Lives Matter movement, there was a time where they was going into the stores and just laying down on the ground. And the Edomites were still in there shopping. They'll just step over them and just walk right to where they got to go. Mm, mm. It's crazy. Y'all see this? And they did that. Is that a Mandingo? Yes. In the movie Mandingo, they actually used that. Uh, there's a clip showing that. They said it drained the rheumatism right out through the soul. Right. And this is why if you ever look at white people, they love to rub black people's hair, especially your kids. Because amongst them, there's a... a, a they have this myth amongst them that we have some power within us to bring forth healing. So that's why they always want to rub the black kid's hair or they used to put their feet on us. Read that scripture again with this. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Right, so we lay, literally laid our body down as the ground at one time. Now we do it. Spiritually, we let them say whatever to us, okay? The image of the black man today has become a caricature, has become a cartoon. When you think of black men, you think of oversized clothing, or one time you did, with pants below your butt, or now with skinny jeans. 
We are cartoon characters in society. Nobody takes our manhood seriously. That's why black men, when you look at some of these marches, they walk around with signs saying, I am a man. If you got to walk around with a sign saying you are a man, there's something really wrong with that. Really, really wrong, okay? Get me uh, Proverbs 26. So by nature, black men, Latin men, we are created to provide and protect for our families. But America has ensured we are unable or unwilling to do what comes naturally. So we react with violence against one another. Not against the oppressor, but against one another, our brother. Watch this, Proverbs 26 and 18. Proverbs 26 and verse 18. Remember, when by nature we're meant to provide and protect, but society, America, has made it so that we are unwilling or unable to do that. So in response, we fight each other. We tear down each other. Our um, fallacies, or, or give me some words, our... It, can I say ineptitudes? Is that a word? Yeah. It just popped into my head. Yeah. <laughs> Our ineptness makes us not attack the oppressor, but attack each other. Our impetus. Our impetus. I like that word. Give me that. Read that Proverbs 26, 18, and 19. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? So God compares the jokester who says things to destroy and hurt like a madman who shoots. Imagine somebody who's got a firebrand arrow and just shoot. <laughs> that arrow, what? There's a whole, what goes up, what? Must come down. That arrow is going to come down and hit somebody. Then you say, oh, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. God says that we're like that guy with our mouth. Okay? From there, say, same topic. Get me um, uh, Zechariah 7, 8 and 11. Book of Zechariah, chapter 7 and verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, nor the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother and in your heart. And let none of you imagine evil against what? His brother. A Against his brother, go ahead. In your heart. In your heart. That's what God's message to the black man is. That's what God's message to the Israelite man is. Let none of you imagine evil in his heart. What verse was that? That was verse 10. Go ahead. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped the ears. So you know what it means when you say you pulled away the shoulder? Like somebody put their hand on you, go pull your shoulder. Like, yeah, get off me. I don't want to hear that crap. I don't want to hear that Bible. I don't want to hear that repentance crap. All I want to hear is the white man is the devil, damn it. They don't want to hear love your neighbor as you love yourself. They refuse. They stop their ears with that. Go ahead. That they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. So wait a minute. It says, yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law. That's what our people hate. Let me tell you something about, well, before I say that, our people always have hated law and order. Don't think it's just against Esau's laws that we hate. No, 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 no. It's deeper than that. When you read the Bible, brothers, and we came out of Egypt, and Moses gave us the laws, did we rebel against the laws? You better believe it. So it has nothing to do with the white man per se. We hate law and order. So when we give the law, our people want to, don't want to hear it. What I do want to hear, brother, I want to hear about how evil the white man is. Okay, that's what well, that is in the Bible. And uh, I want to hear um, how the black woman is no damn good. Okay, that's mentioned. Okay. But in terms of the law, how to fix the black woman that you despise. I don't want to hear that part. Black woman got a problem? Well, brother, you got the solution. Help fix her. No. Pull her shoulder. I don't want to hear that. Get off me. I just want to condemn her because she ain't no damn good. I want that white woman over there. That's what happens. Read that again, Captain Isaac. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath set in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. That's why we continuously get punished as a people. From there, give me Micah 2 and 8. 
Micah chapter 2 and verse 8. Right. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Even of late, my people, meaning the Israelites, have risen up as enemies. Go ahead. He pulled off the robe with the garment from them that pass by, securely as men averse from war. We rob each other. We rob each other. With all this black nationalism, how come the black man and Latin man never robs his oppressor? That's because he is emasculated. Mm -hmm. He will more quickly stand up and rob his own people. That's why he ridicules, humiliates his own people because of his own emasculation. He's half a man. He has to make you, remind you you're half a man and take what you got to make himself feel strong, to make himself seem powerful, to make himself seem or appear chosen of God. Remember, Christ called our people Lost sheep. I want you to look, think of that term. Think about the term real good. Christ called our people sheep for a reason. Can we get that in Matthew 15, 24? The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he called us sheep. Lost sheep. Brothers, understand this. I want all you men to understand this. As men, you are shepherds. You ever see the, um, what is that thing that uh, shepherds carry in their hand? What is that? Staff. Like a, a guiding. The staff. When a, when a sheep is going off, straying away, what does the shepherd do to get, right? He gets the stick, he leads it back. You know what black men do? When they become shepherds, pow! Get back in your place. That's not a shepherd, brothers. That's why they said it's a scary thing to give a black man authority over things. That right, that's what you were saying. The white man knows if you get when you give a people who have been who have never had nothing, you get put power in his hand, he'll destroy his whole race. And I'm let me tell you something. I've seen that in our camp, IUIC, I've seen it. And what I mean by that is this is this as leaders, a brother or sister may be going off. And as the shepherd over the flock, maybe an officer, a soldier, he will, so to speak, get the stick and bang the sheep over the head to break the skull. That is not a shepherd. Power in the hands of an undisciplined person is dangerous. That's the point you're bringing up. You got to have discipline in order to be in charge. Or to, 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 uh? Yes, Luke. you said Luke 12, verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men, the men servants. That's what you got going on in Israel today. Shall begin to beat the men servants. They're beating the men servants by verbal attacks. And them verbal attacks come because of their own emasculation, their own half-hearted, their own weakness. Say, I'm going to attack you now. Mm. Go ahead. And shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. So we got to be mindful. So before we begin to beat the men servants, don't do that. Don't even begin. Don't even don't do it. It says we got to be found doing the will of God when he returns. That means looking after the sheep, okay? The sheep include these brothers and sisters looking after them, okay? Making sure we're guiding them right, properly, according to the laws of God. That's, if we could do that in here, we could do it on a greater scale. Let me tell you something. If we can accomplish that up in here and the various camps we have, the most high will open up doors. We'll do it on a greater scale because we will no longer be a danger to ourselves and implode on each other, biting and devouring each other. Was that it, Captain? And at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Christ is going to kill any shepherds that's out there beating servants. Okay. Jeremiah 50 verse 6. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Y'all see that? My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. When you're teaching men that it's okay to cook on the Sabbath, 
it's okay to buy, or women, it's okay to dress as men. You're causing the Lord's sheep to go astray. That's what you're doing. Don't do that. Was that it? They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Sheep need and require a shepherd or shepherds. Give me John 10, 11. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. So Christ is a good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Y'all see that? The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Was that it? Yes, sir. So that's how we have to be as shepherds. Ariel, are we ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Nate Parker, he's the one he did the movie for the first time. Uh, Nat Turner. It's called, uh, what's the name of the movie called? The Birth of a Nation. The Birth of a Nation. It's about Nat Turner. Nat Turner is the slave who rebelled against white establishment and killed 57 to 60 slave masters. So, this is the young man, the brother who did the movie. Sonny Hostin. And I'm Joey Jackson. You know, actor and activist Nate Parker is joining us tonight. He's put together a very moving short film on YouTube. It's called Hashtag American. Now, the message, all lives matter. And its purpose is to bring all people together, regardless of race, gender, or age, and that's a very notable thing. Now, you, you're doing great work. We have we have looked at it, and are very pleased by what you put together. What's your underlying message? Um, well, I, I, you know, I, the situation happened with Ferguson, and I was moved and compelled to to act in some way. And I feel as though film is my platform. So I connected with a few friends, and we decided to put something together that could inspire empathy. Uh, because the only thing worse than these young brothers being killed is the fact that people seem indifferent to the actual, their lives. So, um, you know, I re we put it together in a matter of weeks. And we reached out to J. Cole, he gave us a song. And, uh, and I wanted to start a conversation, um, not just about, um, you know, all lives matter in the context of a hashtag and a buzzword, but really trying to figure out where do we need to get to the place, what place do we need to get to where America is really standing up to its ideals. Um, and so that, this is basically a jump off point to talk about the things that we're dealing with in this society as we live in it right now. And, and Nate, the, 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 the short was just, it's a short film, about 15 minutes. Yeah. It's on YouTube. I invite all of our viewers to see it because I will tell you, I was stunned uh, when I saw it in my office today. Um, and by the twist in it, it I, I, I didn't know where you were going and then I got it and I just felt it and right. it was powerful. It was extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the film is a lot about, I think, subconscious bias perhaps um, and how men young black men and young white men encounter police officers can you tell us a little bit about your personal experience with that what what made you write about well, that well, in this film well the reality and the root of all of what we're seeing in America right now in my opinion is white supremacy uh, it seems to be a, a, a word no one wants to talk about no one wants to say because of its connections obviously uh, through the genocide to the genocide of the Jewish community um, but white supremacy is a definition of racism uh, we like to talk about racism in terms of racial hates and, and, and hoods and bombing houses uh, in the south in Mississippi or whatever uh, you know, that seems convenient, but the reality is the first two definitions of racism are white supremacy and systemic racism, and that is what we're dealing with. So with this film, what I wanted to bring to light is how a good man, a good police officer, someone that loved his family, someone that did not brutalize his children, uh, someone that before he does what he does, you would think, that's a cop I would want in my community. He goes out and he is susceptible to a system that is that is racist and that is, uh, is, is a part of a disparity that affects uh, young black people more than anyone else. Well, there's certainly, you know, when you talk about white supremacy, though, you, there's a recognition by you, I'm sure, that there are extremely positive and motivated and even keeled people in white America who don't mean mm. African Americans harm in any way. I mean, would you agree with that notion? You're not talking about everybody, Brother, are you? Listen, black empowerment doesn't mean white hate. You know, white supremacy, white supremacy is something that affects all of us. You know, it, it, I remember being young and seeing images of Africa and seeing, you know, young kids with pot bellies and flies walking on their eyes. And I felt a certain way about my blackness through that context. It's all programming. We're all conditioned. But you and didn't let officers... that define you, though, Nate, did you? In other words, you went on to do great things. And while there may be Brother, elements of America who have, you know, who don't have the best of intentions, uh, it's not right. something we could say is, is, is really all America, can we? Well, 
Well, guess what? You're the exception to the rule. I'm accepted, the exception to the rule. The Yale brothers that were there are the exception to the rule. We're not the rule. We, we, we should not be seen as the barometer. You know, our, our president, President Obama, is, is not the, you know, the, the, the barometer. He's an exception because for every one of us, there's so many dying. There's so many, you know, being dealt with, you know, a part of the prison industrial complex, you know, a part of the broken education systems. What we're dealing with is real. And as long as we're looking to the exception to, to let us know where we are as a country, we're never going to change. And you mentioned earlier, you know, the term white supremacy. So Jeremiah 23, 4 and 5. But, but even by looking at that, that shows you, that shows us all, all Hollywood is not sleep. You understand what I'm saying? All Hollywood is not sleep. They see certain things. They have to move. Black, our people have to move at the right time when their spirit moves them. Okay? And a lot of times what they're going to do is move. Let me tell you when they're going to move. A lot of times, when, not just when the time is right, but when the money's right. I'm going to tell you that. They're going to move when they go. A lot of them move like that. Because they know Esau going to hit them in the pockets and make them poor, down and out. And ain't nobody up in here or online watching right with the TV with the camera. Is that it right there? Ain't going to help nobody but yourself. So they said, you know what? Let me wait before I say something. A nigga will not back me up. Where we at? Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So you brothers, understand, understand. Read that again. Jeremiah 23, what verse was that? Verse 4. Go ahead. And I will set up shepherds. That's you brothers. That's y'all. Everyone, you men listening to the sound of my voice, that's you. Go ahead, read it again. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. Your job, our job, is to feed the people. First, with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of God's laws. That's the first thing they got to be fed with. Go ahead. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So our job is to help the sheep so that none of us are lacking. I want us to get to the point where young men are able to come. I was talking with Captain Yashua about this and uh, Bishop Kanai, I believe Deacon Asaph, where young men come in and we have uh, more, a bunch of jobs for men and women where we can provide for them. We have to get to that point on a greater, larger scale. And I believe we're going to get there. Okay. From there, get me uh, Obadiah. Because the Lord is raising up shepherds, 144,000 shepherds. Like it says in Revelation 7 and 4. And here's what it calls those 144 in Obadiah verse 21. Obadiah verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. Y'all see that? We'll see what he calls the 144,000 right there? Saviors. He calls, see what he's calling the shepherds? Saviors. See what he's calling the pastors? Saviors. Jeremiah 315. Remember Jeremiah 315? I will give you pastors according to my mind, to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Here he's calling them saviors. These are all synonyms, brothers. All synonyms. From there, get me Matthew 20. As men, we come into this truth, like we always say, America allows us to grow up, but America does not allow our people, our men, to mature. Okay, we can grow physically, okay, but that's as far as it goes. We're not able to grow economically, financially, mentally. We're not able to grow along those areas except it be through uh, entertainment, right? Okay, as men, we got to learn discipline. Discipline teaches self control. That's something we've not been taught in society. The black and Latin men have not learned self control because there's no discipline. You can't if, without discipline and self control. You can't put you can't put power in such hands. If he doesn't have discipline and self control, power could be the power is the worst thing that he can have because he will be he will make a bomb and blow himself up. Right. Hey, give me that wisdom of Solomon one and five. <laughs> wisdom of Solomon chapter one and verse five. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. See that God's law is all about discipline. That's what his. Another word for law in that verse is discipline. The Holy Spirit of discipline means God equals God's laws. Read it again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And discipline will remove from thoughts which, which are without understanding. So you have a lot of black men who don't have 
um, discipline. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God to be able to move and motivate and organize. They don't have that spirit on them. Sure, they can rabble rouse you. What was the term you used? Uh, demigod. They're demigod. You know what starts off as what causes a demigod? A uh, ego. Yeah, ego. A uh, ego of vainglory. Mm-hmm. Vainglory, which is an ego and emasculated. Imagine ego plus emasculation. That's danger right there. Oh. That's a child with a Uzi running around. Kill everybody, then kill himself. And you have a lot of black men like that today, okay? Ego tripping. That's what I like to call it, ego tripping. Ego ego without discipline will cause you to forget the most highest interest of a nation, okay? You got an ego, you will forget what, that's why when when we teach brothers, what I always tell you brothers, stay where? Stay in the Bible. I guess I say it stay in the spirit too, but meaning in the Bible. Use these words. Don't don't use your, when you start to talk yourself, you start to think you're more clever than God. I don't need that book. I don't need that. I got it. I got it all up in here. No, you ego tripping, brother. You don't have it. Get the book. Read from it. And I'll watch brothers. They'll be reading like this. Some of you brothers who read, I always got to get on y'all about this. They'll be reading a scripture, and they've memorized it. So what they do is they'll finish the verse looking up here or looking over to the side to, to give the illusion that the Bible's in them. Brothers, don't do that. You want the people to know that you're coming from a place that's not you. You want them to know that you're coming from God's place, not from your own mind. So that's why we stay in the book, in the Bible. Okay, don't ego trip, brothers. Don't ego trip. So, as I was saying, when you ego trip, you have an ego without discipline will cause you to forget the most highest interest. And it will also cause you to forget the interest of your people. Because your ego is so big, you will suddenly turn into a power-hungry, mad, egotistical, tyrannical, uh, and you have no other agenda but your own. God's agenda to hell with that. The people's agenda to hell with that too. Brother, what about my agenda? I say, you don't have to keep them laws. You've got to be kidding me. And you got Israelites running around like that. That's an egomaniac. Egotistical, ego tyrannical. You got Israelite leaders like that. Ego tripping will destroy you, brothers, and keep you from becoming. Ego tripping will keep you from becoming an effective leader for the one true God. He cannot use you, okay? Give me that scripture about uh, uh, Saul. Uh, remember he got anointed? First Samuel, uh, yeah, that one, 10 and 3, somewhere around there, okay? Ego tripping, like I was saying, will destroy you, keep you from becoming an effective leader of the most high. Pride, envy, and an inferiority complex gives you a distorted image of your own importance. You heard what I said? That's what pride and envy coupled together gives you that ego. You're, f- you're so full of your own importance. You got to fall. Where are we going? First Samuel 10 and, 6. 10 and 6. First Samuel 10 and 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. See that? That's what being born again does. It turns you into another man. The men we grew up to be is not who God wants us to be, so that's why we must turn into another man. Okay, that's why we got to read about our forefathers and say, Lord, put the spirit of this forefather on me. Change me into this spirit, Lord. That's what we got to do. Because the Negro or Latino we was in the world, that guy got to die. That guy is ego. That guy got pride, envy, envy, and he's broke too. He'll destroy every. Not only did he already destroy his family, now he's here trying to destroy the congregation. No. Give me Matthew 20, 20 and 20. Matthew 20, verse 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons. Listen good to this. Worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what wilt thou? She saith unto him. Listen good. Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. So this woman came to Christ. She said, Lord, let one of my sons sit on your right hand. Let the other son sit on your left hand. They will be your second and third in command. 
Go ahead. But Jesus answered and said, ye know not what ye ask. Women, woman, you simple as hell. Go ahead. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, we are able. And he saith unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. So he said to them, you two brothers, you are going to go through somehow. You're going to be put to death too. You are going to drink what I drink. Go ahead. But to sit. But listen good but. Listen to the but, brothers. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. So can Christ choose his second and third in command? No. no. Why do I hear egotistical maniacs saying they are second to Christ? You are insane, brothers. Why do I hear brothers saying that they are the anointed? The Fuck, I'm like, oh, I can't take him like these people. And people are, Kwan Yasharala! Kwan, Kwan, Kwan! I don't want Kwan. Our people are insane. Brothers, please. I mean no disrespect, but please. Stop the egotistical, tyrannical rules that we are having in Israel. We have to stop it. Can we read what the Savior, the Messiah, the King of Kings said one more again? And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup. And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left, it is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. You know when it says, but it shall. See that word shall means future tense. When do you think those two seats will be chosen by the father? When, brothers? In the kingdom. When we get up out of here. So, for, so for, uh, let me calm down. So now, brothers, uh, Lord forbid I get Alzheimer's and start talking like that. Lord forbid. Or Parkinson's and I'm just uh, shaking. Oh, You're doing the Harlem Shake. <laughs> then you got brothers saying that they are the Lord's chosen and holy apostles. And then men are going, yes, this one here is Paul. This Stop, brothers. Stop. You got to stop that. I, I, I. You brothers here in IUIs, all and sisters too. I, all I could do is show you what the scriptures say. It's up to you whether y'all believe it or not. You want to follow somebody claiming to be the holy chosen apostle? Go ahead. For power to the people. Go ahead. Chosen, following somebody that says that they are the second to Christ, second or third to Christ. Go, power to the people. Go ahead, brothers. Y'all have fun. Right. What, you, what Asaph said. They are the only ones that can bring the nation of it. Christ. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, let me say it in Hebrew, Yahweh HaMashiach, is the only one who can bring the nation of Israel together. Can we get that in Genesis 49, please? And this is not, hey, I want y'all to understand, this is no, this is not hatred, because we love our people. Our prayer is that all Israel gets Christ-minded. Get in the spirit of Christ. Guess what? A brother said to me, do I have to be with IUIC? Brother, no, you don't. You don't have to be with IUIC. All that is commanded for you is to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. Genesis 49 and verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. Shiloh means peaceable one. That's another word for Christ right there. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So is the Bible, brothers, the Bible, sisters, is telling you Israel will only be gathered under Christ. No man on earth, no man is going to upstage Christ. Nobody. You ain't taking, that's his seat. And it's, give me that in Thessalonians. You got that in Thessalonians. It says the same thing. Second, Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. That's what we want. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Unto who? Unto him. Mm. That's saying the same thing we just read in Genesis 49. The gathering together unto him is Christ. Not me, not any man walking the streets. Stop being so gullible, Israel. Stop it. We have to start following what these scriptures say. Brother wrote me today. Do I got to wear purple? Brother, you ain't got to wear purple. You can wear whatever you want to wear. 
<laughs> do, bro. Do what you want. But you can't stay here, though. There you go. You can't. You just be- can't stay here. You got to get the hell out. We like organization. We like order. Give me the Acts 536. For before these days rose up Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody. To now, hold- I'm giving you examples of what we were saying earlier about being an ego maniac. Read that again. For before these days rose up Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody. Boasting himself to be somebody. I am somebody. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> To whom a number of men, about 400... 400 men did what, Captain? Joined themselves. They joined themselves to this dude who boasted himself that he is somebody. Was that it? Who was slain. He was slain. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. Y'all better listen to what the Bible's warning you about. So what happened back then surely shall happen today in these last days. Be mindful. Be very mindful about ego maniacs. Okay, give me the next one. Acts 8, 9 and 10. Acts chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. And what y'all going to find out, I try, uh, when I teach you brothers and sisters, I try to do my best and keep it scriptural. I try not to go on a long verbal tirade. I try not to. I was, let's go back to the Bible. That's why when they, they, they be talking, I'll be waiting for y'all to finish so we go back to the scripture. Go back to the scripture, please. <laughs> Acts 8, where we at? Verse 9. 9 and 10. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery mm. and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. There we go again. Giving out that himself was some great one. I am somebody. Go ahead. <laughs> To whom they all gave heed. To whom they all gave heed. Go ahead. From the least to the greatest. <laughs> From the least to the greatest. Go ahead. Saying, this man is the great power of God. Saying that this dude was the great power of God. <laughs> he bewitched him. But what I'm showing y'all is scriptural that is happening today, brothers and sisters. It's happening today right before your eyes. Just look at YouTube. You see it. Give me Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3. Now, this, go, this lesson goes out for me, the deacons, the captains, the officers, you soldiers, you men up and coming. It goes for us all. Come Romans on. 12 and 3. For I say, do the grace given unto me, to every man that to is... To how many? To who? To every man. To every man. That is among you. Uh-huh. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. You see that? Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Okay. There you go, that black highlighter. So we can't be, it's talking about being an egotistical, or ego maniac. Don't be like that, brothers. We got to try our best, keep that spirit of humility, the same spirit that Christ had on him, Galatians 6 and 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You see that? If you think you yourself to be something when you're nothing, you deceive yourself. Now, there's a scripture. Y'all help me because you know I can't remember nothing. Where's the scripture in Luke? Somebody, you quick smart brothers, where Christ said, um, say, you've done that which is your duty. It's in Luke. Luke 17? Okay, let's read that. Anybody want to know my state of mind, our state of mind? We're going to read Luke, and you're going to see the state of mind that Israel, the brothers under Israel United in crisis. Luke, Luke 17, 17 and verse 10. And so, if your mind is not, if you're t- teetering or tottering on the brink of being an egomaniac brother, this scripture, we're going to bring you right back home. Luke, Luke 17, 17 verse 10. 10. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say... We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty you to see, do. This is what all of us, brother, we are unprofitable servants. All that we do, brothers, whether we teach, whether we go out and camp, whatever it is, we do videos, we are all unprofitable servants. Understand unprofitable because there's nothing that we've done worthy to be called into this truth. It's all by the graces of the one true God that we're all here listening and learning. We are all unprofitable servants, so don't think yourself to be something when you're nothing. 
Okay, that's a humble. That's a humble punch in the face right there. Yeah. Eat some humble pie. Or pie. Oh shoot! I am. I'm a piece of crap. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's what she is. So as important as everyone is in here, called and chosen, our uh, our minds must be according to Luke 17. Uh, what verse was that? That was 10? verse 10. Verse 10. Our oversized ego, an oversized ego is dangerous. It's dangerous. It's aware of nothing but itself. It can't learn from the past. It can't, uh, it won't understand today's events. And it's incapable of making right decisions for the future. I'm going to say it again. An ego will keep you from making right decisions for the future if you have an ego. An egomaniac is hypnotized by itself. And can't be reasoned with. You cannot reason with an ego. You can't. Give me 2 Samuel 17, 23. I'm going to show you an ego again. I'm going to show you the smart, one of the smartest men on earth named Ohithophel. His ego was so big that if you did not listen to his counsel, watch what happened. 2 Samuel 17, verse 23. 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. You see what his ego did to him because the men didn't listen to him? This brother, it told you when you read later on earlier in the chapter, it said his counsel was like talking to an angel of God. That's how smart this, this was smart brother 101. This dude, Ohithophel, was smart brother. David was in the wilderness, okay? And what's David's son's name? Absalom was plotting. He said, what should I do? One dude, Ohithophel said, now is the time to get David. He's at such and such a place, you can kill him here. And the dude was right. But David had an inside man. David told an inside man whose name I can't remember. Cushai? Cushai? Cushai. Okay, thank you. Told him, go confound Ahithophel's counsel. Tell him something else. So David's inside man went and said, listen, you know your David. You know your father, Absalom. He is a mighty man. Him and his men, they're not going to be amongst the people of Israel. He said, but believe me, they're somewhere else. And he said, they'll, they will be like bears uh, taken of their, whose cubs have been taken, and they will slaughter you. So when this dude said that in contrast to Ohithophel's counsel, the spirit had Absalom say, I'm going to go with Husai's counsel. And Ohithophel got mad. He went home, decorated, put his house together, got a rope and hung himself, not listening to me. That's what an ego will do to you. You are so much in love with yourself, so important in yourself. Somebody don't listen to your counsel. You want to kill yourself now. You've got to be kidding me. People are crazy. So now. Hey, don't, tell, huh? don't tell me you haven't seen people like that. You haven't known the people like that. So into themselves like that. And if you don't acknowledge them, they have a tantrum. Right. Exactly. Go crazy. Exactly. So give me Galatians 5. Galatians 5. An emasculated man. An emasculated race of people, that's what we are, an emasculated race, will destroy other members of that racial group, listen good, in order to prove their manhood. I'm going to say it one more time. An emasculated man or race, which is what we are, we, in order to prove our manhood, we will destroy ourselves in order to prove our manhood. Okay, that's what we'll do. Get me Galatians 5 and 15. So, in other words, the way the world calls it, crabs in the barrel. Now, now before we read that, before we read that, get me a uh, Second Corinthians. Asaph had the scripture here. Second Corinthians 10. I know Asaph's throw the saw. Second Corinthians 10, uh, 12 through 15. This is a heavy scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Wait, now that's so heavy right there. There's so much in that. 
Go ahead. You want to you touch it? Go ahead. <laughs> Measuring themselves by themselves. That's some narcissism at its best. Yeah, and that, means, that means you call yourself breaking down something. You wrong as hell. And all the rest, and everybody that's with you saying, yeah, you got it right. Yep, yep, yep. Cunt, yep. cunt, 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 cunt. <laughs> it says, for we dare not make ourselves of the number. Meaning, we dare not make ourselves as the top men, the apostles of God. We dare not do that. Go ahead. Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. And don't, and Paul, Paul says, and we dare not compare ourselves with some that what? That commend that themselves. That commend themselves. You had some Israelites who tried to set themselves up as apostles like we read last week. Remember two weeks ago, Diotrephes. You had groups of men setting themselves up as the apostles. Mm -hmm. And they went up. Peter, Paul said, don't even commend yourselves by comparing ourselves with them. They had their own counsel. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. But they measuring themselves by themselves. You know how dangerous that is to measure yourself by yourself? It's like, let me give you an example. Let's say all of a sudden here is fat bodies. And we go to the gym and we do it. We, oh, look. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, good. Go ahead. Make a muscle. Oh, wow, Batman. Look at that muscle. You, bro, you got all that muscle now. Now, meanwhile, we all out of shape. Yeah. Y'all get and it? And we looking at each other's muscles. We ain't got no muscles. Right. But you can't tell us nothing. <laughs> and you can't tell us and nothing. the rest of the world looking at you like, what the <laughs> hell is wrong with these niggas? So you had these dudes, dumb as hell, setting themselves up as apostles going, bro, that scripture's bad, Jeremiah 14 too. Yeah, you broke that thing man, down that, right. that is a dangerous spirit, man. That is a, because you can't tell them nothing. Yeah, and that goes back to the scripture say, that says, let another man praise you yeah, and you not go. yourself. You understand? Let people from the outside say, listen, this camp, I like what they're doing. These brothers, are like what they're doing. You understand? You know they're talking about we are the only one that could save save Israel and so forth. Let the let the <laughs> let the people the people know the people see they know who who is the one that's out there putting in the work and helping them. They, they, they but the people don't see anything because they're the two thirds. They don't understand. <laughs> 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 they don't understand. Where you at, Captain? Oh, uh, verse twelve. Go ahead. But they measuring themselves by themselves. And comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. It's not wise. When you I always tell brothers, you go into the gym, the brother that's training, you gotta be in good shape. So now I can compare myself to you. You got muscles, you fit. Oh, you, dang, on, I gotta get like that. You gotta work some more. Look, I, my stomach's are hanging out here. Your stomach flat. I gotta get my stomach like that. I ain't gonna compare myself to myself. Look, I look like the uh, freaking, uh, what's the guy, the, uh, the, uh, the black guy with Janet Jackson, uh, Eddie Murphy, uh, the clumps. I look like the clumps. The hell is this? So likewise, in the truth, you got to compare yourself to someone who knows more than you. Okay, let me learn it like this. Okay, go ahead. Verse 13. But we will not boast of things without our measure, mm -hmm. but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us. You know what the rule is that God has distributed to us? That we are all what? We just read it. Unprofitable. Unprofitable service. That's a rule. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. That's a rule. Go ahead. But according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's a rule. That's a law. Go ahead. A measure to reach even unto you. Uh-huh. Come on. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure. Don't stretch yourselves beyond your measure, brother. That's why in this truth. No man is an island in this truth. No, that's why it's important for us to come together in unity. Because what we can't accomplish here in New York, we got brothers in Texas, they can handle the job. And what they can't handle in Texas, we got brothers in Canada that can handle the job. What we can't handle on this side of the world, we got brothers in the UK that can handle the job. That's the importance of unity. Don't think of yourself beyond measure. No man is an island. Come on. As though we reach not unto you, for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of others' men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. That we might be abundant. So now, 
Let's go from there. I thought you had something. Yeah, read what the rest. Read 16. Go ahead. Read six, um, verse 16. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. That's verse. Go ahead. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Knowing himself. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Read the next verse. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. No, who he approves himself. But whom the Lord commendeth. Who the Lord commends. That's who it was approved, based upon his actions. You don't got to boast this up. If you're smart, you don't got to say, hey, you know I'm smart, right? right? We see it already. <laughs> we don't need you to announce you're smart. Or announce you're pretty because we know already. It's you, as far as a female. You know I'm the apostle, right? You know I'm the apostle. You know I'm the apostle. Yeah, I'm, I'm the only apostle. Christ. I'm the elect, brother. You I want to know if these brothers have like a spiritual cell phone or or, or yeah. phone book where God calls them and he goes, you know you're second to me, right? Really? Yeah. Call me. I'll call you later. I'll do something. <laughs> I, I want to hear that email, that voicemail, that text. Maybe it's a spiritual text. You're not going to hear it. It's down. called, called him. I want to see it. I think maybe these scams have it. It's called hearing 100% voices. 100% truth. They get 100% text, 100% truth text, 100% truth voicemails. I want to see them. I want to see them. I want to hear them. I want to feel them. I want to touch it. Exactly. It's true. I want one. <laughs> so understand, understand. Uh, although we, we joke, we're joking about it, and we don't mean no guile or hatred towards any camps. Our prayer is that we all come in a unity in this bond of peace. That is our hope. That is our prayer. Give me uh, Galatians 5 and 15. So we were talking about crabs in a barrel. That's how we are, crabs in a barrel. An emasculated man or race will destroy other members of that race or group in order to prove their manhood. In order for me to prove that I'm bad, I got to destroy you. For me to prove that I'm number one, I got to destroy you. You're in my way, mm. okay? It's just like any of you probably watch karate movies, martial arts movies. When there's a martial artist on the scene and he wants to prove that he's the best martial artist and he wants all the students, what does he usually do? He challenges who's ever head of that dojo or that dojo and tries to beat them to show the people that he is the best. That's black people in Israel. I have to show that I'm smarter and greater than you so that people will listen. To That's their mindset. That is an ego, brothers. You got it for me, Captain? Yes, sir. Galatians 5.15. But if ye bite and devour one another... Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. You know what it means to bite and devour one another? Slander one another. Attack one another verbally, mentally, spiritually, physically. Read it again. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Consumed of one another means destroy one another. Okay? It's like the bloods and the crips. It's like, I'm going to say it again, it's like the comedic community. How they challenge each other, fight each other. Nobody want to go against Esau. Nope. Nobody goes against Christianity. Nobody goes against those strange doctrines that have destroyed our people. But they go Israel against Israel. That's an egomania. That is a madman. Give me 2 Corinthians 3.18. So as an emasculated race, we need to get back our manhood. The only thing that can give us back our manhood, brothers, is the word of God, the Bible. That's it. Only the Bible can restore an emasculated man if he starts to apply God's laws to his life. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Read it again. But we all, all Israel, all of us, go ahead, with open face, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. You know what that glass is that we are beholding the glory of the Lord? The Bible. We're looking at the glory of the Lord and with open face when we're reading this book. Go ahead. Are changed into the same image. Are changed into the same image of Christ. Go ahead. From glory to glory. From glory to glory means from spirit to spirit. Every man, every woman, we're changed to the image of Christ. Go ahead. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. That's how we... And as an emasculated man needs to know, what do I need to do to get my manhood back? The Bible. This book tells you, do A, B, C, D. This will begin to restore you. Get me uh, James 1.23. The 
book of James, chapter 1 and verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. The glass is the Bible. You behold your natural face in the glass. Go ahead. For he beholdeth himself. You behold yourself. You see how you are meant to be. Go ahead. And goeth his way. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You forget what manner of man you were. You're reading the Bible. You're saying to yourself, God is saying to you, I should be like Christ. I should be like Peter and Paul, Nehemiah, Jacob and Isaac. I should be like these men. Then you close the book and forget what you're supposed to be like and start breaking every commandment you can think of. You forgot what you just read, brother. You sisters too. You forgot what you're meant to be. Okay. From there. Get me Sirach 20. When you see, brother, when you see an emasculated man ranting and raving, insulting, name calling, he's filled, as we said before, he's filled with envy and hate and air. Yeah. He is angry at his own shortcomings. Okay. Now, Christ didn't run around angry and hating everybody. He didn't do that. He didn't have to. He had a lot of oil. Right. Because the people, people, people get mad. The, not the disciples. The Pharisees and, and them got mad because the people received the word of God from Christ and the apostles. Y'all with me so far? The scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees were angry because people received the word of God from Christ and the disciples opposed to them. Let me explain something to you that's going on today, too. I just want you to know that. People receive, will receive the word of God from anybody but him. Watch this, Sirach 20 and 20. Sirach 20 and verse 20. There is that is hindered from sinning through want. There is that which is hindered, through, hindered from sinning through want, meaning lack. And when he taketh rest, he shall not be troubled. And when he taketh rest, he shall not be troubled. There is that destroyeth his own soul. There is that destroyeth his own soul. Through bashfulness. Through bashfulness. And by accepting of persons overthroweth himself. And by accepting of persons overthroweth himself. We can't be like that. We cannot accept. That's being partial, okay? Partiality. Partiality. So, get me Sirach 15 and 9. Sirach 15 and 9. Praise is not seemly in the mouth of a sinner, for it was not sent him of the Lord. Read it again. Praise is not seemly in the mouth of a sinner. Praise is not seemly in the mouth of a sinner. Why? For it was not sent him of the Lord. It was not sent him of the Lord. <laughs> Go ahead. For praise shall be uttered in wisdom, and the Lord will prosper it. Y'all see that? Praise will be uttered in wisdom, and the Lord will prosper it. The little bit that we got, brothers and sisters, the Lord is prospering it, okay? That much is true. That much is true. And you know what? Let me say this. I have heard that teaching a man to have one wife until the kingdom is a homosexual doctrine. Somebody needs to tell the Most High that Adam falls in that. He had one wife. Isaac, he had one wife. Give me some more. Noah, he had one wife. Peter, he had one wife. Did somebody tell the, tell the, the Lord that these men were homosexuals? I don't understand what's going on in the comedic Israelite community. That's what I've got to call it now. The comedic Israelite community. There's a sense of madness going on. Out there. It is it's in, insane. Let me help you. The most high is clearing the air. That's what he's doing. He's clearing the deck. That's you know what? what when Christ taught marriage, there were many examples Christ could give of marriage. He could have went to David. He could have went to Solomon. But he said, let me explain marriage with Adam, mm -hmm. the man who had one wife. Can we get that in Matthew 19, 4? Christ could have chose any of our forefathers who had two. Or three, but he said, nope, 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 nope. Let me explain it with the first man who we gave, who, who was given one wife. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning 
Made them male and female? Male and female. Male and female are singular, brothers. Male and female. Go ahead. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Did it say wives? And shall cleave to his wife. Shall cleave to his wife. Not cleave to his wives. Plural. But cleave to his wife. Why did Christ, the Savior, give that example? Why didn't he give a man who had multitudes of women? He could have used Solomon. He said, no, I'm going to use Adam. This is what I want Israel to understand. From there, we're almost done. Give me 1 Timothy 3 and 1. And Asaph, I want that article that you showed about um, uh, 1 Timothy 3. You know what I'm talking about. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. Can we read that, please? 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse, verse, two, verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. Can you jump down to verse 12? Verse 12. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Can you get me Titus 1 and I think it's 5? No, 6. Titus 1, verse 6. Is that it, Isaac? I'm only looking at it. Titus 1, verse 6. Yes, sir. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. Y'all see, we can't. I can't. This, there's just too much in the Bible. Because the new doctrine is that that wife is not talking about a woman. It's talking about the church. Then who are the children in that verse? The books. The books. <laughs> I get <laughs> Measuring themselves by themselves. That's their right. counsel and their answer will be yes. Give First Corinthians 7, please. And 1. The church. Sounds real Catholic. First Corinthians 7 and 1. That's the best of the Catholic church says. That the church to the, to the priests who can't be married is the church. It's a Catholic doctrine. First Corinthians 7 and 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Own church? Every man, so every man's at their own church? Have his own wife. Go ahead. And let every woman have her own husband. You know what that mean? Her own elder? No. Obviously, it's talking about a wife and a husband. That's not talking about no damn church. That's madness. Catholic madness. Let me give you another example of Catholic madness. In the, in the world today, I'll give y'all a clue. In the world today, right, there's a particular religion where the people state that their elder has... Now, who was second to Christ that we know of in the scriptures? Who, was second, who came out after him as leader? In the religions today, there's a particular religion today that states that their elder replaces Peter. Who is that called today? Roman Catholic Church says that the Pope takes Peter's place, hmm, which is second to Christ. So when you say a second to Christ, you're calling yourself a what? A pope. That's you're calling yourself. When you say that your wife in Timothy is the church, that's a Catholic doctrine. That's why you must be very careful what we say when we speak these things. A man that has wisdom thinks before he speaks. Proverbs 17, verse 27, real fast. Proverbs 17, verse 27. Yep, watch this. He that hath knowledge. He that has knowledge that applies God's laws. Go ahead. Spareth his words. Does what now? Spareth his words. You know what it means to spare your words? You don't use your words. You use God's words. When you have knowledge, you will spare your words. Go ahead. And a man of understanding. That keeps the commandments. Is of an excellent spirit. Not a simple one. An excellent spirit. Now, where is this article from? It says Christian Answers, right? Let's go to the top, Abby. I just want to make sure. When you go to Google, type this in. What does it mean to be the husband of one wife? It's by ChristianAnswers.net. Now, let's go down. Now, a video is in circulating about this new, this new teaching. They say that we are Catholics. Watch this. Marriage to the church. This view is not very widely held in Protestant churches, but is proposed by Roman Catholics. It simply states that the elder or bishop is to be married in a metaphoric sense to the church. Now, that is the new doctrine going around that 1 Timothy 3 
And 1 Timothy 3 and 2 and 1 Timothy 3 and 12, when it says one wife, it's referring to the church. This is where it comes from. It's Roman Catholic. Let me read it again. Marriage to the church. This view is not wi very widely held in Protestant churches, but is proposed by Roman Catholics. It simply states that the elder or bishop is to be married in a metaphoric sense to the church. Therefore, supporting their view of celibacy of the pastorate, the obvious problem with this view is that all the other qualifications, meaning in 1 Timothy 3, remember it gives you a whole lot of qualities the bishops and the deacons must have. What? Right, in the home. The obvious problem with this view is that all of the other qualifications are interpreted in a plain, literal manner. Can we read that? Can we read, Isaac, can we read that? Let's get the thought right. Verse 2, 1 Timothy 3 and 2. 1 Timothy 3, verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. So there's a doctrine that's saying that that is meaning the church. The wife represents the church. This article is explaining that that can't make sense because the other qualifications are literal. Read. Vigilant. Vigilant. Sober. Sober. Of good behavior. Of good behavior. Given to hospitality. Given to hospitality. Apt to teach. Apt to teach. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. No striker. No striker. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Not guilt, greedy of filthy lucre. But patient. But patient. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. Not covetous. Not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house. So the point is all those qualifications are literal. They are plain. You can't pull the wife out of that verse and say it's metaphoric. All of it is literal, brothers, the whole thing. I'm going to read this whole all, this part again. This view, marriage to the church, this view is not very widely held in Protestant churches, but is proposed by Roman Catholics. It simply states that the elder or bishop is to be married in a metaphoric sense to the church, therefore supporting their view of celibacy of the pastorate. The obvious problem with this view is that all of the other qualifications are interpreted in a plain, literal manner. There is no reason to believe that Paul intended this qualification to be taken any differently than the other standards. This view also seems to contradict Paul's teaching of 1 Corinthians 7, that was verse 2 you read, right? Which advises men and women to marry in order that they not give in to strong temptations. Do you men understand that? Yes, I really pray you all do. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.